sector UGC MMTTC Professor Mahmud of Sant Gadge Baba Amravati University for having invited me to exchange a few of my thoughts on this very important topic student diversity and inclusive education. If the teachers are able to meet the challenges in student diversity and inclusive education, those teachers are true teachers. They have real expertise in learner-centered pedagogical practices. They have real expertise in having right kind of teacher-student relationship. It is only those teachers who can contribute to the upliftment of the unprivileged classes, the students from unprivileged communities. Students from differently abled categories. Very important, sir. Every student has his or her unique strength, unique potentiality. Right. So we have to meet the needs of diverse learners in our classrooms. It's not only we give a lecture for 60 minutes and leave the hall. Students will not listen to you. They are not with you. Right. And therefore, many students may have a certificate of the degree, but they do not have the required knowledge and skills for employability. With this brief introduction, I shall proceed my lecture in the form of a PowerPoint presentation in order to save time. I suggest all of you, please note down your concerns, your clarifications in a notebook so that at the end of the session, lecture session, I shall have a question answer session. You can ask me any question related to pedagogy, not only on this theme, on any theme, right? So I shall be able to Clarify all your concerns, all your doubts. Now we shall share my PPT with all of you. Are you able to see my slides, sir? Yes, sir. sir. Are you able to see my slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are able to see it. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The change of slide. This change of slide. Are you able to see the new slide? Yes, sir. Yeah. Am I audible? Am I clear to you? Yes, sir. You're audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're clearly audible. Please go ahead. Thank yeah. you. We are in the new paradigm of higher education. Right. And that new paradigm is the student centric paradigm. Most of us, when we were students, we were in a different paradigm. It was teacher-centric paradigm. It was subject-centric paradigm. But today, it is totally different, sir. As teachers, we have to reorient totally 
to the new paradigm that is student centric paradigm student centric education takes into account the need to know and develop the whole personality of the learner not giving a lecture in a class on a subject and leave the hall no no understand and develop the whole personality of the learner okay sir then enhance and facilitate learning foster critical and sustainable thinking promote experiential learning emphasize learning through active participation promote collaboration and teamwork all these are also mentioned in the graduate attributes given by ugc in the form of learning outcomes based curriculum framework and also national board of accreditation all these are included it's not that the students score some marks in a subject and get the degree no there are 12 graduate attributes so our educational transaction has to be radically transformed to fit into the new paradigm of higher education that is student centric paradigm then we have to understand the term before proceeding further what is this student diversity and inclusiveness conceptually what do we understand by this not verbally conceptually that is important all the teachers have to understand conceptually only then they can do justice to this students having different intellectual abilities different neural networks belonging to different states regions religions different social backgrounds cultural backgrounds differently able students students with special needs all such kinds of students study together in the same program in the same class whether it is a university or a college this is the meaning of student diversity and inclusiveness there is no segregation of students it is not that differently able students will have a separate class no not at all it is not that different students with different iqs intellectual quotients study are segregated no not at all all study together different cultural backgrounds from different states different countries also wherever that facility is there all study together in the same class multicultures right sir then state governments and also central governments have brought in several reforms towards inclusiveness in higher education they have upgraded polytechnics to integrate the physically disabled students students with physical disabilities or differently able students into the mainstream earlier they were segregated but they have brought into the mainstream sir this is another point sir i draw your kind attention total attention to this point then we call talk about inclusiveness it is not only physical inclusion giving some reservation to the disadvantaged sections including different labeled students it is not only physical inclusion it is much more than that so what is that much more than that sir 
greater autonomy in choosing courses. When we say greater autonomy in choosing courses, what does it mean? More number of electives besides the core courses, more number of electives. Appropriate pedagogical practices, appropriate teaching methods, appropriate teaching materials, learning materials. Sorry Excuse to me, sir. Sorry to interrupt you, but your slide is not uh, rotating. Not... You are at title slide only. Sir? We are at first slide only. Can you kindly rotate your slide? Yeah. Please uh, enter into yeah, yeah. slide show. Take the slide show mode only. No, no, sir, is... now, now is it rotated? No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Only first slide. Make it uh, PPT mode. Make it on the screen. Now is it uh, changed? Yes, yes sir, sir, it is floating, but now it is not in uh, slideshow mode still. Yeah, it is not in slideshow mode, but are you able to right. see this? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, then we will proceed. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Then we will proceed with this in order to save time. Okay. There was no problem in Google Meet. All along, I have been giving lectures in Google Meet. There was no issue. But I do not know how this has come up like this. But if you are able to see this and listen to my voice, that is good enough. This PPT is already shared with the organizer, Professor Mohammed, yes. and then he will share with all of you in the Surely, evening, sir. in the afternoon. Surely. Right. So, greater autonomy in choosing courses, appropriate teaching methodologies to meet the diverse learners, appropriate learning materials, tools, and appropriate assessment of others also, sir. That is important. Only then you can say you have done justice to student diversity and inclusive education. All the programs in the university must improve the self-efficacy of the students. These students, whether it is from low economic backgrounds are different labeled students or students with special needs they have their own potential sir i have experience with many of such students and many other also success stories are there with different labeled students these students must gain confidence that they are at par with peers. They are at par with peers with naturally existing differences in potential aptitude and skills. See, no two individuals are identical. Their neural networks are different. Their capabilities are different. Their skills are different. But what is important is one has to realize one's own potential one has to realize one's own strength. That is important. Right. So when we talk about student diversity and inclusive education, we have to consider three domains of learning. Three domains of learning, sir. Teachers have to address all the the needs of diverse learners in all the three domains of learning. What are the three domains? Cognitive domain, which is related to mental process, thinking process. Affective domain, related to emotions, feelings, attitudes, and beliefs. Psychomotor domain, related to physical skills, such as movement, coordination, manipulation, dexterity, that means skillful performance, all that. We have to address all the three domains of learning. You can see here, this is called COPE's learning cycle. Students will have concrete experience in many courses, in many disciplines of knowledge. 
then based on the concrete experience, they have to reflect upon that. Think about that experience only through reflection. There is conceptualization. Conceptualization. So once some concept is formed in a new context, this concept, the student will be applying this concept to new context. So that is called active experimentation. Then based on that new context, he will have a new experience again because that context is different. So the experience is different. For a new experience, again there will be reflection. Based on that reflection, again, either the concept may be totally different or the concept may be reinforced or the student may have even better insight than before and the COPE's learning cycle goes on. It is unlimited. Learning is unlimited. What is important is all the diverse learners must be provided opportunities to experience the above learning cycle. Hope's learning cycle is has very significant place in learning, whether it is teachers or students, for any kind of learn. Sir, when you want to meet the need of needs of diverse learners, our pedagogical practices must be learner-centric. Learner-centric. More than one method we have to use. We have to provide activities inside the classroom and outside the classroom to the learners. That is learner-centric. It is not continuously we give lecture for one hour and leave the hall. That is not learner-centric. In an hour of 60 minutes, a minimum of 50 minutes, students must be engaged in some kind of activity, problem solving, group discussion, case study analysis, writing an essay, writing a paragraph, coherent paragraph, whatever, independent work. Even the remaining 45 minutes also, student, teacher has to organize his lecture with active participation of the students in between asking their reflections, their questions, pausing, listening to them, listening to their questions, all that, even the remaining 45 minutes also. The students must actively participate. So we shall discuss what are these learner-centered pedagogical practices. Sir, as teachers, we have to equip with these learner-centric pedagogical practices, we have to learn on a continuous basis. There is no end. I may, I may have taught for 45 years. Still, I am learning. Every day I am learning. When I prepare for a new, new topic, I take nearly one month time. I study it. I go to much deeper study, investigate it, meditate upon it. So learning continues. Right. So with a new batch of students, you may have to orient differently and adopt new styles of teaching and new pedagogical practices. Let us proceed further. Why focus teaching on the learner? Because in our classrooms, we have diverse learners. The other one, deer, is not uh, shown here. Tortoise, hare, and deer. So it's a representation of different diverse learners in classrooms. Slow learner, moderate learner, fast learner. And they have their unique strengths, unique skills. They represent different backgrounds. They different different cultures. They different economic backgrounds. The learning styles are different, sir. Right. This has been my experience. You may be teaching in a particular method, but the students learn 
according to their own style. Right. So some students are sensory learners. They learn with the help of their senses. A few of the students in your classrooms are intuitive learners. Right. You ask an open-ended question, right? They will come out with an answer which is totally unexpected of, of them. You will be surprised, oh, what an answer it is. Intuitive learners, a few of them, not all. And some are visual learners. If you should demonstrate some visual aids, they learn very comfortably. Some are auditory learners. By listening to your lecture, they will be able to learn. Some are kinesthetic learners. Only when they do physical activities, either in the lab or in field studies, they will be able to learn comfortably. And some are, some learn by use with your inductive method and some by deductive method. What are these inductive and deductive? So when you use examples, when you, you start teaching a subject, you use examples based on the day-to-day -day experiences of the student. It is possible. Then some anecdotes, then applications of that particular subject. Then ask the students to generalize, to define. They will be able to do it. In this inductive method, students participate actively because you are asking them their experience. For example, when I explain about lithium batteries in my classroom, either in master's chemistry or B.Tech chemistry or chemical engineering, so I asked them their experience. Now every student in higher education has a smartphone. They may not be using in the classroom, but they have a smartphone. So what do they do? Every day they do charging. Then charging of what? Charging of a battery, right? There is a battery inside. That battery is being charged. Which kind of battery? Then I will show them. I will show them, demonstrate them this lithium ion battery. I will demonstrate them. So, this is the lithium ion battery which is there in all your cell phones. Right. Why lithium ion battery? Because this lithium has very light metal. Therefore, the energy density is very high. That is the reason why we use lithium ion battery. So then I am connecting the students to the subject. Immediately they come back to me from their own beautiful words. That is inductive method. I will give the applications of lithium ion battery also. Then I go to the electrochemistry of that. Then deductive method. So the same subject I will be telling. So this is the representation of lithium ion battery. These are the reactions at anode and cathode, the whole thing. These are the applications of lithium ion battery. So I will be going on explaining. That is deductive method. In deductive method, students are passive learners, passive observers. The student teacher may have delivered beautifully, but students' attention span is not more than a minute or two. Again, they go back to their own worlds, come back, go back, come back, go back. On the other hand, if they are involved in active participation, they are with you. They are connected with the subject. They are in the classroom. They enjoy learning. Therefore, in my all, all through my years, I have followed inductive method of teaching in, to all my students at any level. Then some students are active learners. 
if you ask a question, especially the students in the first benches, immediately some of them will come out with answers and you are happy about it. But there are some students, sir, in your classrooms. They take time. They are reflective learners. They take time to answer. Therefore, you always, you should give, not give up opportunity for answering questions only to few students. You have to give opportunity to others. Then the reflective learners will also take time and answer. You give time. You give enough time. That is important, sir. It's a common mistake of all the teachers that when we ask the question, we expect the answer immediately. That is wrong. Students need time to think, to reflect upon your question. That much time you have to give so that all the student minds are thinking about it, reflecting about it. So reflection is a very good way of learning. So therefore, we have to give opportunity for reflective learners also. Then sequential and global learners. Sequential, when you explain step by step, most of the students are comfortable in learning. Some students are global learners. That means simultaneously you are explaining a topic, they will connect immediately to some other topic done in another subject. Two, three different subjects, they will immediately relate this to that. Those are called global learners. But all are not global learners. Therefore, I used to teach to address the needs of sequential learners. But after completing the unit, I will take one hour to connect different concepts in the unit and to connect those concepts even to the concepts of other courses. So that interconnections I used to make at the end of the unit for one or two hours so that even the other students also will be able to see the beauty of interconnecting the concepts. That is global learning. So in course of time, the students of all the students of my class will become global learners by the end of the semester. Right. So that is very important. We start sequentially, but it is very important that we take our students towards global learning. Then approaches to learning. Base of intellectual development are different, sir. No two neural networks are identical. Different cultural and social backgrounds. Differently abled students. We have all students in our classroom with different learning styles. Therefore, we should have prepared with different teaching strategies, plan different teaching strategies. So we may start implementing one strategy. If that strategy does not work out with the majority of the students, sir, sir, one of the participants, one of the participants, please, please mute yourself. Please mute your mic, sir. Madam, it is disturbing the lesson. You see, then and there, we switch over to another method so that majority of the students are able to understand. Okay. I shall show you different strategies also in my subsequent uh, slides. Right. This is very important, sir. I draw your kind attention to this, sir. Learn from the learner. Learn from the learner. This I understood. This quotation I did not see because at those days internet was not there. In 1978 itself, when I started my career as teacher, as lecturer, during the first few weeks itself, I understood this point, sir. And this helped me. This guided me throughout my teaching career. Right, sir. So that 
there were no failures in my courses. No failures. Because I was always trying to observe how my students learn. Accordingly, I reorient my teaching strategies, my assignment questions, my tests, everything. Right? As they understand. I always used to teach by using more than one method. I used to use, take effectively my lab classes to reach out to underperformers, one-to-one -one basis that is possible in lab courses. So I'll read it for you, sir. Learn from the learner. Instruction begins when you, the teacher, learn from the learner. Put yourself in his place so that you may understand what he learns and the way he understands it. What he learns and the way he understands it. Accordingly, you orient yourself on a continuous basis. So some methodologies have worked out very well for teaching a particular course. But the same methodologies need not work for teaching another course. Some methodologies have worked out well for teaching a particular batch of students, but the same methodologies may not work out for another batch of students. Every time, a new batch of students, okay? Therefore, I used to destroy all my notes deliberately, except some data which are necessary I used to keep, so that I am not imprisoned myself by the how I have taught Earlier, I look at a fresh again when the next batch joins. So the, there are two advantages here. I, when I refer the new books, I will have learned many more new things. I will have deeper insight than before. At the same time, I will be planning different strategies. I am not imprisoning myself by my accumulated knowledge. You have to unlearn unless you can, otherwise you cannot learn new things. Accumulated knowledge is a burden unless you empty it, empty it, empty it, then move forward to the updated knowledge. This Kierkegaard quotation I have seen only in 2005. By that time, I have been implementing it since 1978 itself. I was so happy to see a great thinker and philosopher, Kierkegaard, who was different from his contemporary philosophers in several aspects. You can go through Kierkegaard's writings. You will be extremely happy to uh, see his ideas. There is another quotation by Swami Vivekananda. The true teacher is he who can immediately come down to the level of the learner. Come down to the level of the learner. See, this point we don't talk about. Transfer his soul to the student's soul because one may believe in soul, one need not believe in soul. I'm not putting that point before you immediately come down to the level of the learner. Seize the, seize the students through his mind and understands him through his mind. Such teachers alone can teach and analyze. Here also, coming down to the level of learner, understanding him, and then plan our strategies. So similar message from Swami Vivekananda. So in order to facilitate learning outcomes, today we are all, we are supposed to implement outcome-based education, arts, science, humanities, and commerce programs. We have to implement based on the learning outcomes-based curriculum framework given by UGC, Unity Pharmacy, Architecture, Management Programs, guidelines given by National Board of Accreditation. We don't have a choice. Therefore, in order to facilitate the learning outcomes among the students, 
based on the intended learning outcomes. Today's teachers must equip with three things, sir. Subject knowledge mastery. When I say subject knowledge mastery, in-depth learning, deep insight, not surface learning. Solving several problems, analyzing several case studies. In terms of Bloom's taxonomy, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create levels that teachers have to master the knowledge. That is important, sir. That is the first point. Therefore, I used to advise the principals and vice chancellors, you allot the courses one semester in advance. And you allow the junior most teachers to choose the courses first. The senior most teachers will choose at the end. And give six months time for preparation so that they will have the mastery of knowledge. Even for all the years, even when I were as a young teacher or as I was the senior most professor for for several years, I was the senior most professor in the Department of Chemistry. I was the last person to choose the course. And whenever new courses are introduced, curriculum in the curriculum, advanced courses, I was the first to come forward. Yes, I will teach that course. It needs preparation, but six months time is available. Subject knowledge mastery is very important, sir. You see, you must be able to answer any, any kind of question asked by the students. You must be able to refer different kinds of books. The most standard books available in a particular discipline. Second point, sir, pedagogy, appropriate teaching methods. In higher education, most of the teachers do not undergo training, did not undergo training, previous training in teaching methods. They, they normally they do not, most of the faculty do not do BA or MA. But today, the ministry has come forward with these uh, MMTTs to uh, what is called to conduct FIP programs, one month FIP programs for faculty, wherein the pedagogy is given due importance, outcome-based teaching, learning strategies, outcome-based assessment strategies, all that, teacher-student relationship, mentoring, all are covered. So you have to undergo that one month. That is not sufficient. That is only a beginning. But we have to update. Today, there are several articles on new teaching methodologies in different journals and even internet also you will you will be able to have very good articles i was greatly benefited by those experiences of great teachers in the world you have to go through that not only mastery of subject knowledge how do we teach a particular course how do we conduct questions good questions in a particular course all that we should be able to Equip ourselves on a continuous basis. Both are on a continuous basis. Third one, sir. Integrating ICT in teaching and learning. Information and communication technology in teaching and learning. Our students today are have great negative influence by the social media. Entertainment industry has taken over the students as well as the faculty, as well all in the society. Okay. Now, in order to bring back all those students to your classrooms, get connected with the subject, maybe for motivation, you may have to introduce, you may have to demonstrate some working models, some experiments, or two to three minutes videos also to create excitement of that learning in the classroom. Then they get connected with you. Then you proceed with the explanation of the subject by inductive method. Even assessment also, ongoing feedback, formative assessment, 
there are tools like Google Quiz, Flickers, Clickers. A number of tools are available to have ongoing feedback, formative assessment to do it so that you fill the gap of knowledge. You will have the analytics also in that software. So ICT can be used very effectively in teaching, learning, and assessment also. You have several softwares in many disciplines, several open tools. If you teach the tool with the help of the tool, the student one-to-one -one teacher student ratio, one can equip himself or herself very fast, right? Therefore, all these three are equally important. Today's teachers have to equip them themselves with the mastery of knowledge, appropriate pedagogy, learner-centric pedagogy, and then using ICT in teaching, learning, and assessment, all three, sir. Right. Otherwise, you will be outdated very soon. Your students do not like your classes. Then what happens? You will live with the greatest dissatisfaction from the classroom. But if your classes are exciting the students and they are very happy with you, when you enter the class, their faces will be blooming. And when you leave the class also, their minds will be filled with the great joy. They have experienced learning. Then what happens to you? You will have greatest satisfaction, sir. Then you will have a very happy time and very nice sleep in the night. This is very important, sir. Teachers, when they enjoy learning, when they, their students enjoy learning, that is the happiest profession, in my opinion. At this age, at the age of 73, I am able to exchange my experiences, my ideas with all of you. It is only because I love it. It is only because I am extremely happy with all that. That is important, sir. It is not a routine job. It is not a mechanical job. It's a creative job. The other day, I was watching a video, a dialogue between J. Krishnamurti, a great philosopher, and David Bohm, a theoretical physicist. A dialogue between a philosopher and a theoretical physicist. They were talking about if the brain is creative, the brain cells, even if, even if when you are old, the brain cells die and new cells are born, the aging will be delayed and the brain does not shrink. Therefore, teaching is a great, the greatest profession where you are learning continuously and your brain will function because it's a great exercise for the brain. That brain functions. As long as you live, you learn, and the brain is very active, very alert. You are lucky to be in the teaching profession, sir. So learner centered pedagogical practices must emphasize active learning by students, active le participation by students. What is the definition for active learning? This is the best definition I could get. Any instructional method you use that engages students in the learning process. In short, thus it requires students to do meaningful learning activities, sir. Not something. Meaningful learning activities and think about what they are doing. Reflect about what they are doing. Not doing mechanically. Only through reflection they will be conceptualized. Only through reflection they will have the internalization of the knowledge. Not doing mechanically. That is active learning. Listening to your lecture is not active learning, sir. Writing notes is not considered active learning, sir. They may write mechanically. When they listen to your lecture also, they will listen for one or two minutes. That is the attention span. They go back into the other world and again come back only when they actively participate either in group discussion 
or question answer session or problem solving, case study analysis, paragraph writing, essay writing, whatever they do, then only they are, that is called active learning and then learning retention rate will be higher. Let us see what another ed great educational psychologist, John Holt, says about it. Learning is not the product of teaching. It does not mean that we should not teach. There is second point. Learning is the product of activity of learner. So the, this is the implication. You may teach, but unless there is activity of learners inside the classroom and outside the classroom, that learning will be surface learning. The retention will be very low. And there is another point also here, another implication for this quotation. When the students are made independent learners, independent learners, even without teaching, they learn because they are independent learners. They will put in more and more effort. If they do not understand something, they will go to know the prerequisite knowledge they understand and then try to learn. But more important is we are facilitators of learning. We are facilitators of learning, providing great and great opportunities for the students to do activities inside the classroom and outside the classroom. During our lecture interaction also, there should be more and more lecture uh, interaction. You see this learning pyramid, sir. If you use only lecture method, only lecture, 60 minutes, lecturing, leave the hall. Average retention rate is only 5%. On the other hand, practice by doing. The students do it. Problem solving or in the lab or discussion, question answer session, whatever. 75% is the retention rate. Student seminars, students deliver seminars, that is teach others. Retention rate is 90%. It does not mean we should not have lecture. Like without lecturing, you cannot have the class. Lecturing must be there in every class, but along with the lecturing, there can be audiovisual or demonstration of an experiment or a working model or case anecdote or something or uh, whatever, this is to motivate the students, to get the students connected to you. Then discussion, practice by doing, these are there during the last 15 to 20 minutes of every class. Every class I am just mentioning. Then a general question in several FDPs, I think uh, more than 200, FDPs or FIPs, I may have given lectures. So the common question is, how do we cover the syllabus? My, I used to advocate since more than 10 years, I used to advocate. Reduce the syllabus. Even NUP 2020 mentioned, reduce the syllabus to the extent of remove 30%, which the students can learn by self-learning. Discuss the concepts. Discuss the applications of the concepts. Ensure critical thinking and problem solving and analytical reasoning in the students, self-learning and lifelong learning among the students. So in my, in several years, whenever I am involved in board of studies in MIT Warangal or in academic senate or Board of Studies member outside the colleges. So 60 minutes class, I used to consider only as 45 minutes. How much? 15 minutes for students or activity only. So hour by hour, I used to plan the content and then freeze after 50 hours, if it is a four credit course. What is That's the time all. Yeah, so heavy is burden of the now syllabus. What is there? If you have heavy burden of the syllabus, you will not be able to 
implement learning learner centered pedagogical practices it is impossible sir therefore please mercilessly cut down your syllabus without sacrificing the standard at the national level even ugc also mentioned even their guidelines their curriculum model curriculum if they have done you can deviate to the next of 30 mm -hmm. you can deviate to the next of 30 Sir, one so more part. Sir, one more part. Spend, please, please mute. Please mute, sir. You are disturbing. Therefore, even UGC himself, himself is telling mm -hmm. the doctor. Yeah, UGC itself is suggesting you can deviate to an extent of thirty percent. Be careful. If you are overloaded with syllabus, you cannot implement anything. Now, these are some of the active learning strategies, sir, which it's not that all of them you will be implementing in a single class appropriately. At least one in every class appropriately you can start implementing, sir. Learning by doing, learning through discussion among peer group, learning through case studies, group projects, through field studies, in many courses, problem-oriented guided inquiry learning, Fogel is very popular in the world. That means you give a problem, that problem consists of various steps, then one by one, the students will be guided. If the first thing is solved, then they will be guided to the second part. That is how it goes on. Experiential learning, reflective learning is very much talked about these days, reflective learning, the role of reflective learning in higher education. Then one minute paper during the classroom interaction. Now this is the very much in work in the world. So many faculty who have attended my lectures, many of them, hundreds of them have already implemented this and the feedback is good. They have given feedback to me about the positive impact of this one minute paper. What is this one minute paper? See, when you start giving, instructing a particular course, you inform the students in the first hour itself, my dear friends, if there is any unclear point, or if you have a question, or if you have any new reflection, about that point or if you have any new approach to understand that concept you put it on paper maybe after 15 or 20 minutes the class representative collect will collect all the papers from the students initially there may not be many papers but when you nurture this culture very soon many students will like to put those their questions on the paper. So the teacher can address the common questions and then clarify by using a different methodology. So that then and there, the gap of knowledge is removed from the students because knowledge is learned by the students. Students acquire knowledge brick by brick. Therefore, once that knowledge gap is removed, then and there, the students are very comfortable. There is another implication here, sir. When this culture of putting their, their questions on a paper is nurtured by all the teachers, what happens? The students are more attentive to your class because only when they are attentive, they can put a question on a paper, okay? If they are more attentive in your class, I think lots of their problems and your problems are solved. Okay. They will be interacting more. They will be doing assignments very comfortably. There will be no copying problem of the assignments for whenever marks are there. Okay. Several problems are solved when the knowledge gap is filled very frequently. 
So that is the purpose of, it is not one minute paper is the name given, but it may take two minutes or three minutes, no issue at all. Right. Then other strategies, open-ended questions by the teacher, having more than one answer, more than one approach, more than one solution. Open-ended questions from students. <laughs> Very important, sir. I had many open-ended questions from my students, especially the BTEC students. They are very smart, very intelligent. So sometimes I could not answer, but I never bluffed them. Right? I humbly admitted that I do not know this. I appreciate your challenging question. So I will disc I will try to refer to other books and come prepared in the next class. I will uh, we will discuss about this question as the first item in the next class. You also prepare. Other students also can prepare at their home. Perhaps you may also come out with answers. In most of the cases, in the next class, the students used to answer, some of the students. Very rarely, uh, I had to answer, right? The students will be able to answer, okay? So open-ended questions from students, collecting questions in the bowl. The class representative, questions please, questions please, just before the end of the class. So that means nurturing, Questions from the students. Very important. Sir. Preparation of question bank by students at various cognitive levels. Just you ask one student to prepare only one question in a particular unit at apply, analyze, and evaluate levels based on your learning outcomes of the course. So preparing questions is a very good active learning strategy. Sir, if you go to Socratic method of learning, teaching and learning. Actually, my video is there in the YouTube on Socratic method of teaching and learning. It's all through questions. He never gave answers. Only questions. Students come out with answers. Further questions, further questions, further questions. So today, that same Socratic method of teaching and learning, today it is called inquiry-based learning. Okay. Then this is the YouTube channel name, Professor B.V. Aparov. These are the recommended videos. Learning Outcomes Based Active Learning Strategies, Part 1. That is learner-centric pedagogical practices. Then Part 2, Socratic Method of Teaching and Learning and Teacher-Student Relationship, which is very important, sir, to meet the diverse learners' needs. Teacher-Student Relationship is very important. Then Case Study as Active Learning Strategy. It can be used in all the disciplines of knowledge. Engineering, science, management, social sciences, humanities, everything. Case study method fosters active learning at higher cognitive levels. So I used to teach corrosion science as open elective in fourth year BTEC, in which all the branches used to register. So everything after explaining the principles, classroom, case studies, analysis, Home assignment, case study analysis, question text also, basic principles and case studies. It was a wonderful experience to me as well as to my students. Case study of failure of five foundation. You see, this is given by Subramanian et al. 2009 paper. It is discussed. In Shanghai, a huge building is flat. Sir, one more participant. Please mute. Please mute. You are disturbing. Please mute. Right? So the, this case study will explain how a simple lapse of not uh, testing the soil and ensuring the suitability of the soil was responsible for the collapse of a huge building. Learning through group discussion. So again, many of my participants in the FDPs, they have followed this and feedback is good. You can organize this 
one time in every three classes, three to four classes, once you can organize this. The challenge is here to design a problem or a question with more than one solution, more than one approach, two or three approaches, two or three solutions like that, that designing the problem is important. Okay. So the first phase is think phase. If there are 60 students, you divide them into 20 groups, each student, each group, not more than three students. The first phase, think phase, ask the, every student to think and note down in his notebook, his approach, his solution, three to four minutes time. Then group phase, ask the three students in group to exchange their ideas, to exchange their approaches and solutions, come to a unanimous approach and solution. That is group phase. It takes more time, five minutes. Then share phase. Suggested duration is 10 minutes, more time, because each group will be sharing their approach and solution and the teacher will note down on the blackboard or whiteboard. So group A will present their solution. Then group D will say, so, no, sir, we have another approach. They will present. The teacher will note down. Group F will come and say, sir, we have another approach, a different solution, right? Like that, after four or five groups present their approaches and solutions, then it will be exhausted. You cannot have so many approaches and solutions to any problem. Then other groups will say, we go with the group A, we, we go with the group D, we go with the group F. What is happening, sir, here? In the think phase, every student of 60 thinks about it. Active participation. Group phase. They exchange their ideas. Again, they are active participation. Share phase. When one group presents, other groups also are alert. They are looking at the presentation of their peers. So they are active participation. So you, you cannot do this activity in every class. Once in three or four classes, it is possible. Right? So smart board, interactive whiteboard is a great tool for active learning, for videos, PPTs, discussion, interaction, all can be integrated. You can record. The recorded lesson can be again watched by other students when they have doubts. The students who have missed the classes for genuine reasons, they can watch the recorded video, right, so that there is continuity of knowledge. A great tool, but there is, it is not cost effective to provide this in all classrooms. Still, I think uh, even MITs and IITs are not able to provide in all classrooms. Only in some seminar halls, we are able to provide, right? Small group projects for cooperative learning, that is called jigsaw project. Whenever you give group project, you put not more than three students in it. And you select the project in such a way that each, that the project will have three tasks, three components. And each student is accountable for completing one component. And the three students complete, the outcome of the, the three students will be the outcome of the project. In this way, all the three students are active. And each student has to present in the seminar their, his contribution, and the questions will be asked to every student. So all the three students are actively participating. And there will be scaffolding also possible. You cleverly formulate the groups in such a way there is a slow learner, moderate learner, and fast learner in every group. Cleverly, don't brand the students. Don't brand the students. Cleverly, you do that. So that scaffolding is possible. Even a slow learner, when he has some doubts in his task, he can get the answered by the fast learner helped that is that also leads to collaborative learning cooperative learning it's a very good uh, activity and even blind students or physically disabled students or deaf and dumb students or students with special needs don't segregate them let them be part of each one of them will be part of one group so that is how you can make the inclusiveness inclusiveness 
right? Even in case of continuous and comprehensive assessment also, you have to take care of the needs of differently abled students. If necessary, even different assessment tests can be given to them, okay? Now, UGC guidelines, it has given for persons with benchmark disabilities, UGC has given guidelines, 2018. I am presenting here the guidelines here. You can go through those guidelines very leisurely. One important guideline is if a regular student without any disability is given three hours time, the blind students or other students who use the scribe to write his on his behalf at the examination must be given four hours time. That means for each one hour, 20 minutes compensatory time must be given to the differently abled students who use the, whoever use the scribe. So there are several points here. One can use more than one scribe if there are two different languages. So several very good points are there. For want of time, I'm not uh, explaining. These are self-explanatory. There is no concept involved, but you have to give compensatory time to different labeled students in every examination. The micro details are there here. A few sources of open educational resources, sir. You see, during our times, we have to discover our own teaching strategies, active learning strategies. But today, you have wealth of open educational resources, sir. I have given the list completely here. I was greatly benefited, especially by MIT OCW, Massachusetts Institute of Technology Open Courseware, in first open, open source, 2001. I started using it since 2005 when MIT Warangal had the internet facility, right? So you will have their lecture notes, you will have the assignments, you will have the video lectures, all that, you will have their curriculum, everything will be there in that open course where, and then billions of rupees are spent by philanthropic donations and the internal revenue of the institutions. All these are open educational resources. You can make the best use of these open educational resources to know the strategies, how to teach the blind students, how to teach the deaf and dumb students, what are the different assessment strategies, how to meet the diverse needs of the diverse learners. So many strategies will be available. Wealth of information is there. It's a revolution going on in the world and India can be great beneficiary for it. Even in India also, you have OER, NPTEL, National Program for Technology Enhanced Learning, Spoken Tutorial of IIT Bombay, then other open educational resources. I have given almost exhaustive list. Even open textbooks are available, sir. When you say open textbooks, please don't think that they are of substandard. No, sir. The great teachers who wanted to contribute to the world, the essence of their knowledge, because many students in the world cannot purchase textbooks even in higher education, sir. I know that. I have many students of my own, okay? So therefore, these open textbooks also are available. You, you go through open textbooks and then you can also prescribe them so that the students, poor students will be greatly benefited. Even your library can be provided. In PTEL courses, you have video lectures and lecture notes. I have made use of these lecture notes and video lectures in teaching my courses. And Swayam, again, a great uh, indigenous platform starting from ninth standard to PG, you have online courses by great teachers in this country, right? So they have developed the online courses in several disciplines, sir. So find out which discipline of you is available in Swayam. Ask the students to register to that course also. Besides, they will be attending your classes. Besides that, simultaneously, they can register for that course. Even UGC also mentions a few credits earned through Swayam courses can be added to their 
uh, what is called complete eligibility for completion of the degree. Swayam courses are excellent in the sense each Swayam course has four quadrants. One quadrant, video lecture, excellently made by the Indian teachers with Indian accent, Indian pronunciation, right, which can be understood even by rural students, which may not have, who may not have command on English language, they, it can be understood, sir, like that they have given, right. Then specially prepared reading material that can be downloaded and printed, reading material. So, the students will watch the video lecture again and again. Carefully, they can download it. They listen, can listen to it again and again. They can read the material. Then they can undergo the self-assessment test periodically after every three to four, after a part, com completion of a particular concept, there will be a self-assessment quiz. If they are able to do well that self-assessment, they can proceed further. Otherwise, they can watch the video lecture again, read the material again, and again perform the self-assessment test so that there is no gap. And another fourth component is online discussion forum. Suppose if thousand students are, have registered for a particular course, for example, a BSc mathematics course, thousand students have registered. This online discussion forum, the students can put their questions in the online discussion forum. I need clarification here. So other students can post the answers. Even the teacher also can post the answer. Teacher also is one of the learners. When the teacher also, as he watches the online discussion forum, he, it will be a learning experience to the teacher also because many, many students will be participating and then it's a continuous discussion. So in-depth knowledge, poem courses are excellent courses, sir. So you, you can, you can, even teachers also can be benefited by the Swayam courses. See, after I got superannuated at the age of 65, I attended a 12-week online FDP course organized by IIT Bombay. I was greatly benefited, sir. There is no end for learning. I was greatly benefited. I used to, all the, again, those courses are also organized this way. Video lectures, specially prepared reading material, self-assessment quiz, every week one quiz, sir. And yes, it is assessed. Every week one assignment, sir, assessed again by the peers. And then again, there is online discussion forum. All these four quadrants are there. Even if you go through Moodle learning management system, so all these four quadrants also will be there in the telemedicine. Poem courses are the best courses because there is a three-stage three screening process. It's not just that the course, anybody can put that three-stage screening process. Only the best courses are put online in that uh, platform. Then Swayam Prabha, again, video lectures, 24 by 7, so many channels for your course. Which channel you have, your course is, uh, lectures are there, you identify, you suggest it to your students, right? So there are some uh, video lectures, which are already over, but they will be in archives. You can also ask the students to listen to them. You see, you may be teaching very well, but listening to many teachers will reinforce learning. The gaps of knowledge will be filled and the motivation levels of the students will be increased and it will be learner-centric, right? So these are the details I have given. And I have published three videos in my YouTube channel. Name is Professor B. V. Aparo regarding open educational resources. All details I have given. 
even if you develop a open educational resource, how do, do you get a Creative Commons license? Right? So if you have Creative Commons license, nobody can uh, steal it. Right? So then teacher-student relationship. Most important, sir, teacher-student relationship is most important. Right kind of teacher-student relationship is needed in order to meet the challenges of student diversity and inclusiveness in higher education. This is the key. Sir, whatever I could do in my career to see Justice is done to all the diverse learners. It is because of this right kind of teacher-student relationship, sir. I can say with conviction this point. So I shall quickly go through these points. Mutual trust and respect are very important in teacher-student relationship. It's not that students respect the teacher. Teacher also respects the student. That is important, sir. When the teachers are respected for their expertise and their faith in the students' abilities, students seek their help and encouragement. In turn, the students are appreciated for their willingness to take the responsibility, become involved, and do the work needed to achieve a particular task. Right. So most of the teachers believe that only when the students are under their control, then they will be doing the task assigned to them. But in my opinion, my experience is that it is wrong. Any kind of authority has a negative impact on the relationship. Authority breeds fear. Fear destroys the innate abilities of the students like creativity, spontaneity, inquisitiveness, questioning attitude, and above all, motivation to learn. Students will not actively participate in your classrooms. Students will not get connected with you, sir. As you enter into the classroom, their mind is filled with fear. They will be totally disconnected with you, sir. On the other hand, when you enter into the classroom, they see a friend in you, they see a person who has concerned about you. Their faces blue. They get connected with you immediately. They want to interact with you. right? So they see a companion in you. So then they learn very fast. Their motivation levels are increased. When the motivation levels are increased, there will be expansion of the brain that is established by research, motivation, intrinsic motivation has direct impact on the learning of the students. Therefore, but already students are afraid because of their er earlier experience, especially underprivileged sections, students from minority sections are already gripped, gripped with fear because of the treatment in the society. Their self-efficacy is destroyed by the society. Therefore, it is necessary, first of all, in the first few classes, to dispel fear, sir. They are already grippled with fear. To dispel fear with a positive relationship with them. We are all facilitators of learning. We may use phrases like, let us investigate together. Let us learn together. I am one with you. Right. Anything we will discuss, I am here to help you. So with that, in first few classes itself, students know what you are, not only your words, through your actions, they evaluate. As you evaluate the students, students also will evaluate you. In the first few classes itself, right kind of relationship is established. And building positive teacher-student relationship, assist the students as instructor, Facilitator, guide, and mentor. Encourage students. Understand the students and their needs. Foster learning that is relevant to learners' needs. Pay special attention to students with special needs and differently abled students. Give importance to continuous of 
continuum of increasing student responsibility in decision making. That is important. Sir. Teachers have to transfer control and students have to take greater responsibility. This is key, sir. Students must be responsible for their own learning. They must be become independent learners, sir. See, greet students warmly when they arrive each day. Be affectionate, show respect and caring. Be impartial, listening to students with empathy. Engage in one-to-one -one with every student. Provide secure relationship. Talk to them in pleasant and calm voices. Provide opportunities for holistic learning experiences with inclusive approach. Help students under understand classroom expectations. Encourage them to listen to others. Acknowledge the students for their effort and accomplishment. This is another important. Appreciate the deed of the activity or activity of the student, but not the student. Similarly, condemn the mischief or misdeed of the student, but not the students. Right? So you say it is wrong, but still don't hate him. Don't condemn him. Right? So give him an opportunity to correct himself. It is possible, sir, for right kind of relationship. The students will definitely correct, sir. Adopt a supportive style. A supportive teaching style allows for student authority, increased student interest, enjoyment, and engagement. Supportive teachers' behaviors include listening, giving encouragement, being responsive to two students' questions, empathy for students, nurturing self-worth, a sense of autonomy, give the needed support to differently abled students. Strategies with struggling students. When students are struggling with poor academic performance, one strategy that may work is teach them how to learn. Outline specific strategies for completing an assignment or reviewing for an exam. Scaffolding is a technique. It is a technique where the complexity is gradually increased as the students are capable of doing more complex tasks. This work technique works well to motivate learners. Always encourage the students to compare with their earlier performance and achieve still better. Do not compare with other students' performance. Tell them often that they should not compare with other students. Each student has his or her own skill. Ask them to work upon their strengths and their own capabilities. They are second to none. Right. How a teacher should not be, should not be, can be seen in the quote by a great teacher, H.G. Genot. Blaming and shaming, preaching and moralizing, ordering and bossing, admonishing and accusing, ridiculing and belittling, belittling threatening and bribing, diagnosing and prognosing these techniques brutalize, vulgarize, and dehumanize children. Same is true with the students in higher education. I suggest that as teachers, we should never use any of these techniques. Empathetic relationship with students and effective communication with them are very important attributes of a teacher and have a great impact, positive impact, on the effective domain of the learning outcomes of the students. So I quote here Carl, Carl Rogers, a great social psychologist who had a positive impact on millions of people all over the world. Man's inability to communicate is a result of his failure to listen effectively. So we always say students should we listen to us. We have to listen to them also. We think we listen, but very rarely do we listen with real understanding, true empathy, at listening of this very special kind is one of the great forces, most potent forces for change I know, that I know. Yes. Guidance, counseling, and mentoring of students by teachers is necessary in all the institutions of higher education to deal with student diversity and inclusiveness in higher education. It is most important 
guidance, counseling, and mentoring. One to one level, very important. Sir. I was involved in guidance, academic career guidance, counseling, and mentoring. And there are hundreds of students who are still 30 years ago students, 40 years ago students, still they are in contact with me even today, right? So those teachers who do justice to student diversity and inclusive education in their career or find great fulfillment in all their lives, they contribute to the life making and life building of several students of the in their career thousands of students it is the teacher who can make build or help build the lives of many students my tributes are to such great teachers i wish that all of you become such great teachers in course of your career Thank you very much. Now it is time for question answer session. It is uh, exactly the time, whatever given to me after I began the class, it is over. So if a few questions are there, they are most welcome. So now I shall stop sharing. Yes, participants, now the forum is open for discussion the questions. Uh, you can ask any queries or questions uh, with regards to today's session to directly, sir, please. Any questions, sir? Not only on this session, anything related to pedagogy, research, anything, any themes you have, in NEP 2020, on yes, any team, any concern, you can ask me, sir. Professor Khatib, sir, if, Professor Khatib, sir, is there any questions? If you have... Yes, sir. Very, very good afternoon, sir. Very good afternoon. <laughs> sir, uh, very nice deliberations. And I had enjoyed your lecture. And uh, you were the motivational factor or I, I feel that you are a motivational speaker and I had enjoyed your session very nicely, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir uh, um, uh, presentations, if you could provide, at least uh, those uh, uh, e uh, the swim Google, uh, swim lectures, Moodle, Moodle sites, online media, yeah. which could be provided to our students. If you could provide that the list, so I shall be very much uh, thankful to you. Yeah. Sir, actually, the, the PPT of my lecture yeah. will be shared with all of you by uh, the organizer. Yeah, yeah, sir. We have, yeah. sir, Atif, sir yeah. we have the PPT of there. Yes, so yeah. definitely we will upload in the portal also and in our group, yes. WhatsApp group also. I will share, sir. I yes. will share. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Nice second, session, point, sec and enjoy. second point is Swayam, you can go to the home page. Swayam portal home page. Yes. You can go it to is, home it page. Is there, sir. But huh? then uh, I want your experience, uh, experience that what uh, you have experienced and what will be uh, a great uh, your experience yeah. we want to share with yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it is there. You see, yeah, it I'm, is. It's uh, a, I, am, see, I belong to a computer department. Yeah, very good. Sir. Computer very department. Good. And very I good. am aware of all this. Yeah. But yeah. that yeah. sort of experience that yeah, yeah, yeah. what is and yeah. what could be disseminated to students yeah. Yeah. and how they could be encouraged in using this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that I want from your side. Exactly. exactly. Actually, so I also have developed a course under NMEICT scheme sponsored by IIT Kharagpur on first bit chemistry. That also is, was there in these four quadrants. So essentially, it is completely learner-centric. Yes. Learner-centric. That is the first thing in the sense 
suppose in the classroom if the student misses a particular class then there will be discontinuity of knowledge whereas in swayam courses because any time anywhere he can watch the video he can watch the video again and again there is no discontinuity of knowledge then he the printed material also is well drafted there will be worked out problems there will be exercises it is written in the self learning mode in the self learning mode that will be also great help to the student after having read a particular material then one has to do the quiz quiz so when the student is able to perform the quiz then that means he has understood that is how the quiz is prepared yes, quiz yes, also sir. is challenging yes, yes so if he, so by doing all these things still he may have some questions some reflections some open ended questions he can put that uh, question in the chat box online discussion forum is there so hundreds of questions when i have undergone this uh, course organized by iit bombay maybe 40 50 questions will be there every day and i used to answer some of the questions then i used to put some of the questions even the teacher was unable to answer some of the questions then the students answer will be able to answer some of the questions it is a great experience for the teacher also teacher also is learning through the online discussion forum sir and many questions are open ended questions right and main point is these swayam courses are developed by great teachers and not only that there is a three stage screening process the first stage is the teacher and the teacher has to select those courses which are there in the curricula in the curricula at the bsc level mostly at undergraduate level in the curricula of many universities or colleges only such courses are accepted so then he will send the script first the story story of the course then the committee will select will go through the story if it is good they will go to the next stage if it is not good accepted by the committee it will be rejected it will be rejected he cannot move forward if the committee is satisfied with the story of the script of the course then they will ask him to send two or three video lectures so those video lectures the the ministry will pay for it actually for uh, doing the video lectures uh, in mit warangal we have maths resource center for that uh, mhrd has fixed already somebody in hyderabad a professional the ministry will pay for it we don't have to pay for it so the two three video lectures what the exam whether there is pausing whether the accent and pronunciation are clear whether the presentation is sequential whether it can be understood by the students very clearly all that will be seen again by the committee by that two or three video lectures so then that they, if they are satisfied if they are if the video lectures are not satisfied then it is gone then they will say it is rejected so you need not go if they are happy about it then they will call the candidate for the third phase that means for the interview to the committee so in the interview they will see the depth of the knowledge right so whether he has prepared all this or somebody else has done that the uh, depth of his knowledge and his uh, interest his motivation his passion all this they will look into it and then they will they will finally fund it and honorarium itself is uh, about uh, if you i am giving the information about 3 years ago information at then it was 4 lakhs honorarium and the entire expenditure towards the cost of uh, preparing the course video lectures or reading material everything will be borne by the uh, ministry itself that is how the swayam courses are extremely grateful for both the teachers young teachers especially 
who are still to have the mastery of knowledge and also the students. Definitely, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. And then, I, you see, I wanted to reach out to a large number of teachers. This It has been my mission since more than 12 years. Therefore, I thought by these lectures, I will be uh, reaching out only a few hundreds, a few thousands. Therefore, I have put in YouTube, or uh, based on my experience, several, the entire pedagogy, whatever I have acquired, I have put even assessment, even how to set good multiple choice questions. That is, that is very, very important these days. Many teachers are not trained. So guidelines, how to set good multiple choice questions, how to design the curriculum, learning outcomes based curriculum design, learning outcomes based assessment strategies, how to formulate course learning outcomes, all these things and uh, Bloom's taxonomy of learning levels, motivation and learning, all these things I have put in my channel. So definitely, and it is brief because uh, I know that the video should not be generally be of less than 15 minutes duration. The less the better, the less the better. Five minutes, excellent, right? But five minutes I may not be able to cover with greater clarity. Therefore, I chose between 10 minutes and 15 minutes, right? The essence, that means directly, it is a takeaway directly. The guidelines means, so those guidelines are framed based on my experience in organizing so many FDPs and the inputs from the participants, where they lack gaps, where they lack clarity. Based on that, I have taken all those inputs and so that the teachers can be very, very comfortable. Even templates I have put for learning outcomes based curriculum framework, part one, part two, and part three, based on the UGC guidelines. So I have given the templates also. So simply they can, for their particular course, they can fill the template with examples, example of a good vision statement, good mission statement, good qualification descriptors or PEOs, good uh, program learning outcomes, all that, graduate attributes, all that with examples I have given so that many teachers are greatly uh, benefited by that. And uh, this multiple choice questions guidelines some of the universities have made use of those guidelines to set admission tests based on MCQ, admission test. And some of the people have made use of them to conduct the competitive examinations because uh, I have made those guidelines to set standard multiple choice questions at apply level, analyze level also not only at remember level, apply and analyze the level also, how to set good multiple choice questions. Okay. Thanks for thank an opportunity sir. given, sir. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, is there any other questions or the queries? Sir, I think there is no questions or the queries. Oh, so if you could uh, permit, uh, shall we yeah. conclude sir, this session? Okay, sir. Uh, okay. Is there any concluding remarks, sir, from your side? Yeah, um, from my side, you see, sir, in my opinion, as I mentioned, every student can excel to his or her potential. I quote here two examples. One blind student in MBA in University of Hyderabad, one blind student, Top of the list of the students got gold medal at par with the other highly able students. A differently able student got first rank in comparison. Like that, they have great strength, sir. So I believe that every student has his or her own uniqueness and strength capabilities. Second example. When I have given a faculty development program, when I asked a challenging question, 
immediately one faculty member answered immediately a challenging question then i went to him to appreciate him he was staring at me so i was appreciating him he was staring at me then i why i was i was just looking at then his neighboring participant mentioned sir he is a blind faculty blind teacher see a blind teacher among 40 teachers answered a challenging question first right so my experience says that most of the children students are good are interested in learning the problem is there is a mismatch of their interests and the courses they have joined based on the societal pressure peer pressure and parental pressure so i look forward to a change in the societal values and parent student relationship so that the students join the courses which are of their interest and their competence that is the first point and second point is if the colleges and universities make the best use of the 15 days induction program for the students when they join in the first year undergraduate program they have 15 days induction training program those 15 days if the colleges make the best use of filling their gap in the prerequisite knowledge especially in mathematics accounts physics english for rural students so a daily some 2 to 3 hours because all will not be having lack of prerequisite knowledge only a few of them so those who are bright students can be used as teaching assistants and the teachers may also be there so those 15 days you can, the colleges can make you best use to improve upon their self efficacy to fill the prerequisite knowledge once the self efficacy is improved sir students can do wonders and wonders right so my another concern is the governments how to fill in the vacant positions vacant positions by faculty positions by qualif with qualified and competent faculty even the selection procedures how to be modified to attract the best minds in the society to the teaching profession i have great concern to that because only when the faculty student ratio is 1 is to 15 all these things can be implemented all these good things which we have talked about can be implemented when the faculty student ratio 1 is to 15 1 is to 15 when i mean it's not that 15 students must be there in a particular class not that suppose you have a computer science engineering program for 4 years so you have 60 students 240 students for btech program alone you must have 16 faculty members at the ratio of 1 is to 15 nac mentions up to 1 is to 25 accreditation is possible then you will have only 9.5 faculty it is not possible to meet the challenges of diverse student diversity and inclusive education it is not possible to implement holistic and multidisciplinary education with that faculty ratio sometime ago a few years ago aict mentioned clearly faculty student ratio must be 1 is to 15 or better but why they have diluted so again for example nits and iits and central universities faculty student ratio is 1 is to 10 nits 1 is to 12 but the number of iits nits and central universities is insignificant when you consider thousands of colleges about 60 to 70000 colleges are there in the country this number is insignificant what is important for our country is the average level of the graduate his quality has to be improved therefore that faculty student ratio 
must be 1 is to 15 or better. So there, the policy decision of the government is very, very important. Accordingly, even in private colleges, all colleges, even the salary packages, why should they be different between a private college or and government college? The qualification is same, the work is same. So unless the best minds are attracted to teaching profession, whether it is government college or private college, see the, the best things cannot be implemented in higher education. I quote here Angela Merkel, the former chancellor of Germany. So she always implemented to attract the best minds in the society to teaching profession by providing the highest package to teachers. When the doctors and engineers and lawyers with similar qualifications argued, questioned her, then the, he, she mentioned, after all, lawyers, doctors, IAS officers, engineers, and all the politicians, you are all taught by teachers. Therefore, teachers should be paid more. At the same time, she also was addressing the teachers. If you have passion for teaching, if you really want to contribute your best to teaching, to see that the next generation of the students will be greatly benefited and contribute to the betterment of the society, to harmony of the society, then only you come to the teaching profession. Just because it is attractive by salary packages, don't come to the teaching profession. So I totally agree with Angela Merkel and I am propagating this across the country that best minds should be attracted to the teaching profession by providing them a very secure family life and great respect in the society. Teachers must be respected, have the highest respect in the society. Then only the students will have high esteem and then it leads to a harmonious society where there is freedom of expression, unity and diversity, and all students, people from all faiths, from all cultures, from all economic backgrounds, live together with same security and in greater harmony by keeping the personal faiths as at personal level, but at community level, we are all together. Because the human consciousness is the same, whether it is in upper or, or Professor Mahmoud or somebody else, the human consciousness is same. This is my concluding remark. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we are luckily fortunate to hear you uh, on a, such a huge and very clear roadmap. You have provided our, uh, you have provided us a very clear roadmap. How do we how we develop uh, the student diversity and the background and uh, we can include in our daily, daily teaching learning. Definitely, sir, we will try our best. So it's now uh, time to conclude this session. Yeah. Yeah. So on behalf of uh, UGC Malvi Mission Teacher Training Center, Sant Gargay Baba Amrauti University, Amrauti, I extend my heartfelt gratitude and sincere thanks to Professor Aparao, sir, for enlightening us on a, such a very big topic and very huge topic sir you have delivered this session not delivered or conduct this session in a very best manner that you have uh, the uh, you have explained this complex concept in a very simplest way so definitely we, uh, your experience and your knowledge we will definitely in uh, inculcate inculcate in our uh, daily teaching learning and uh, definitely we will do uh, whatever may be the needful in our futuristic uh, learning teaching learning and in our higher education ecosystem thank you thank you so much sir and Thanks. with the permission of professor Apparao, sir, i would like to declare that friends this session will be over here and we will meet sharp at 6 pm in our evening session Thank you Thank all. You, Thank you Thank all. You, we enjoyed this session. Thank you all.
हेलो प्रोफेसर तातेवार सर हेलो यस या गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल यस सर योर स्क्रीन इज विजिबल जस्ट शेयर योर पीपीटी सर या इज इट विजिबल नाउ या सर इट इज विजिबल काइंडली मेक इन या पावर पॉइंट मोड सर नाउ इज इट is it yes, okay yes yes uh, this is second slide sir can you go for the first slide yes 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 sir. but yes. i am not able to see the participants and other things like uh, you can sir you can just uh, post the whatever maybe the link you can post in the chat box and just uh, in your side make a uh, gallery view sir then you gallery can see view. sir gallery view gallery view How 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 can get the gallery? Sir, on the on the right side on the top view there is an option of view. On the PPT, I have to go to this uh, Zoom meeting, no? Yes, sir. First? Yes, sir. Zoom meeting. Yes. Okay. Yes, ah, yes. Is view is there. Ah. Yes, sir. Make it gallery. Open sir. gallery. Yeah, gallery. Yes. Yes. I open yes. gallery. Yes, sir. And now just share your PPT, sir. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, but if I'm you could, not... if you could permit, shall we start, sir? Uh, but I am not able to see the views of participants. This uh... sir, that will be chat... seen in the chat box, either in the gallery view, sir, only. I am in no gallery view, no. Yeah, yeah, sir. You are in gallery view, but your screen is sharing due to that. Uh, then uh, uh, the participants is not seeing uh, seeing you, sir. now what happens is that my screen is visible to me only that's all other things i am not visible yeah yeah sir but participants are there you can just interact acha acha that things will be yes sir in yes interaction will be there yes sir yes yes okay okay so At participants same... uh, uh, sir uh, only one minute uh, okay so participants this is a interactive session and uh, all the participants are requested to take active uh, participation in each and every interaction during this session so it's humble request from the expert side as well as the, our uh, organizer side for each and every participants so if uh, i think it's at 6 uh, 63 and we will start with our session so good evening one and all uh, we are gathered here for the last session of this flagship program that is nep orientation and sensitization program of education under university grants commission and run by the sant galge baba amravati university malviya mission teacher training center i again welcome you a warm welcome you to this virtual platform uh, today in the last session we have invited uh, professor <laughs> tatewar sir sir warm welcome you on behalf of the ugc malviya mission teacher training center sant galge baba amravati university thank you sir thank you program friends uh, professor tatewar sir is presently serving as a professor at department of civil engineering at government college of engineering that is autonomous college in amravati sir <laughs> has more than 38 years of uh, research uh, P, uh, teaching experience as well as 10 years of uh, research, uh, research experience uh, his area of specialization is uh, <laughs> hydraulic engineering Uh, under his able guidance uh, one uh, phd students is ongoing and sir mo uh, published uh, more than 45 papers written also one book and sir completed two majors and one minor research projects sir has received the five awards also the basic thing of uh, today is to invite the sir sir is a master trainer of the aict on the universal human values in holistic education so marathit mhanto ki apan संस्कार हे फार अत्यंत महत्वाचे असतात आणि संस्काराचे समाज घडवतात आणि संस्कार मानवी मूल्य मानवी मूल्यांवर रुजवण्याकरता शिक्षक हा अत्यंत महत्वाचा घटक आहे सो वी हॅव इन्व्हायटेड फॉर दिस क्रुशियल टॉपिक दॅट इज युनिव्हर्सल ह्युमन व्हॅल्यूज अँड होलॅस्टिक एज्युकेशन दॅट इज अलाइन विथ अवर एन ई पी दॅट इज व्हेरी क्रुशियल अँड एन ई पी पेज व्हेरी मोस्ट इम्फायसिस ऑन दिस टॉपिक So with this brief introduction sir I again warm welcome you and request you to start with your session sir please Thank you thank you sir am i audible sir clearly yes, sir you are clearly audible and your screen is clearly visible sir please continue Okay thank you sir Good evening one in one on all uh, I am Dr S P Tatewar I am working as a professor in Government College of Engineering Amravati 
we are going to discuss the topic universal human values in holistic education uh, we will have an interactive session i will go one by one slide now what is the need of universal human values in education in the present scenario to get the idea i will read one of the news that was published in the newspaper so that you will get the idea uh, news is like that national law college and higher police officers in the department of government of maharashtra has carried out the criminal record in nagpur region from last 10 years and the findings of the murder cases in this uh, criminal record is like this total murder cases was 1086 and the qualified people like phd mbbs engineers lawyers post graduate etc these qualified people involved in the murder cases was 138 and the people who are completely non qualified involved in the murder cases was 83 only means qualified people involved in the murder cases was more than that of the non qualified people what does it indicate our present education provides only skills for earning the monies but no art of how to lead the happy life we don't know what is the good and what is the bad as you aware of for graduation we required about 20 to 21 years for post graduation about 25 years post graduation about 25 years and for the phd it requires about 28 to 30 years it indicate that about one third of our life span we are spending in the education investing in the education but despite of all these things we don't know what is the good and what is the bad whether murders are good or murder or bad what do you feel and looking to this scenario the aict ugc has incorporated this subject in the curriculum now if you see the present problem in the society at the level of individual you will find that there are rising problem of depression stress insecurity suicide psychosomatic disease like bp sugar loneliness is it increasing or decreasing day by day what do you feel anybody from you increasing 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 at the level of Please. family what happened at the level of family if you see the problems breaking of joint family insecurities in relationship mistrust divorce threat dowry torture wasteful expenditure in family etc is it increasing or decreasing day by day it is also in it is also good at the level of society if you see the problems growing incidence of terrorism and nationalism spreading casteism wars between the nations fear of nuclear war is it increasing or decreasing it is also increasing sir it is also increasing at the level of nature if you see the global warming water soil noise pollution resources depletion deforestation loss of fertility of soil is also increasing day by day are you agree with me yes sir yes sir yes sir why this is happening because we are trying to achieve happiness and prosperity by maximum accumulation and consumption of physical facilities everybody want to accumulate nowadays nobody want to give the others is it the fact and yes, because sir. of this because of this we are leading toward the unhappiness now before understanding what do mean by happiness and have unhappiness we should know what is natural acceptance it is innate in nature 
by birth we have natural acceptance it is invariant and uncorrupted by precondition it is definite now i will give the example of natural acceptance if i ask you what is acceptable to us naturally feeling of trust or mistrust what is the answer what do you expect from others trust or trust. distrust trust 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 good if i ask you what is the feeling you expect from others respect or disrespect respect respect, respect. feeling of affection or jealousy affection. affection affection feeling of gratitude or ingratitude gratitude gratitude feeling of love or hatred love, love. these are naturally acceptable if i ask you do you want to be healthy or unhealthy healthy do you want to be in relation or in a position in relation nobody wants to have a position it's our natural acceptance do you want to live with prosperity or deprivation prosperity prosperity is it is it need any education to give the answers of this question no not yeah. at all not at all it will come spontaneously of course you don't need to think over this you want to be healthy or unhealthy you will immediately tell that i want to be healthy. everybody want to be healthy isn't it this is right. called as the natural acceptance it it comes by birth isn't it right now when we behave we imbibe these feelings of natural acceptance it leads to happiness it leads to harmony and when we express this feelings of natural acceptance with others it leads to happiness of others also therefore we should know what is natural acceptance and we should imbibe this natural acceptance we take the decision as per the natural acceptance am i right is it making any sense yes sir exactly now this uh, process of universal human values has the process of self verification whatever i am going to tell you is a pro proposal don't assume it as a true or false but you verify it's your own right how do you verify you have to verify on the basis of natural acceptance that is the first criteria whatever i am going to tell you you don't believe on it but you verify it and if you verify and validate it then you believe on it first criteria is on the basis of natural acceptance what is the second criteria experimental validation what do i mean by experimental validation live according to proposal first criteria is behavior with human beings live with the human beings as per this proposal and you see whether you get the happiness or not mutual happiness both of you will get the happiness or not second criteria is that work with the rest of nature as per the proposal and see that whether it gives the mutual prosperity or not if first criteria satisfy if second criteria satisfy you will get self verified and your proposal is correct you are not believing on some blind beliefs you are actually validating the things now i will take the example suppose i have given you the proposal live in relation to lead the happy life you should be live in relation you should maintain the relation now this is the proposal i have told to you now we will we will be verify on the basis of natural acceptance to live in relationship is naturally acceptable or unacceptable what is what do you feel as per the natural acceptance live in relationship or in a position everybody would like to live in relation am i right right sir or you want to have a fights with everybody you want no sir no we want to maintain healthy relationships
नो ऑडियो सर ऑडिबल यस बिहेवियर विथ अदर पर्सन विथ रिलेशन विल इट लीड्स टू म्यूचुअल हैप्पीनेस यस इट विल डेफिनेटली लीड्स टू म्यूचुअल हैप्पीनेस If you leads with the rest of nature, with relation, if you maintain the relation, if you protect the nature, if you protect the nature, see, some audio is there, disturbance is there. Please see if any have unmute the mic. If you maintain the relationship with the nature, then nature will prosperous you. You will also. get prosperity isn't it therefore it will give the mutual prosperity that's criteria 1 is satisfied and criteria 2 is satisfied therefore proposal is self verified is it correct this is how you have to verify are you getting me any question am i right yes right sir okay good you go on interacting so that i will understand whether i am going on proper track or not now what is mean by happiness you should know if you want to remain happy you should know what is the meaning of happiness it is the state or situation in which i live in continuation i want to maintain that condition that state of mind it is the state of liking is called the happiness and this happiness is possible when we should have a harmony with four factors what are the four factor first is the self second is the family say so third is the society fourth is the nature if you maintain the harmony with self family society and nature then you will be remaining happiness happy you will remain in happy, happy and you will be remain continuously happy what is unhappiness it is the state situation which don't we don't want to continue if there are conflicts contradiction then would you like to continue that state nobody want to continue that is called the unhappiness i will take the example now suppose we consider the respect respect is a state of harmony between the two human being i have given you the respect if i come to your i come to your home you have given me the respect and i have given you the respect both of us are giving the respect to one another then is it the state of harmony or disharmony harmony sir harmony harmony if you, if you are in harmony do you feel happy or unhappy in that case happy be happy so happy. your presentation is not visible is not visible what i have to do please, please excuse kindly excuse your presentation is not visible sir uh, i don't know what i have to do is it the no. internet pro problem no do you do you have a, your presentation is it any powerpoint presentation is there with you this is what i am displaying here no i am sharing my screen but then it is not visible sir <laughs> nobody other party will, other so just the entire space Other just participants can enter can confirm. No, no, yes, there sir, is no scene. Sir, 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 please not please share. Visible, not sir, please, please yes, share your sir, screen, sir. Again, please share your screen, sir. Okay, okay. now it visible sir yeah now it visible sir yes okay. sir visible sir screen is visible okay good good yes sir visible okay we'll go to the powerpoint is it okay yeah perfect sir. perfect okay okay now respect is the state of harmony therefore when we are in harmony we will maintain the 
happiness we will have a continuous happiness now if you ask if i ask you the question how many of you want to be happy life and how many of you want to be unhappy life how many of you want to be happy life all sir all all of all. us everyone wants sir everybody everybody wants happy life happy life how many yes how many of you want to be continuous happiness and how how many of you want to be in continuous unhappiness continuous uh, happiness all of every, us uh, all of you want continuous happiness how many of you want to be have sometimes happiness and sometimes unhappiness kabhi khushi kabhi gham gham so we don't we don't want unhappiness but somehow or the other it comes like normally everything uh, around us does not happen according to our wish if Yeah, uh, everything happens goes according to what we want. Then we are happy, and if sometimes it does not goes according to our wish, we feel unhappy. Unhappy. That is it. That is the situation that makes you happy or unhappy. But what is your intention? No, your my intention is... will be to happy, but unhappiness happy. comes by itself. I am asking your desire. How many of you want to be? Want to be? Everybody want, want to, to be. be. Everybody. everybody and every times you want you want to be in continuation happiness right. should be there yes that is and therefore we should see our basic desire aspiration what is our basic aspiration as a human being our basic aspiration is continuous state of happiness and prosperity now i will explain it you see i'm uh, teaching in engineering college government engineering college every student many times nowadays everybody want to be engineer or doctor suppose he want to be engineer why he want to become engineer what he, he will get after doing the engineering degree he will get the money name and fame am i right we are he is doing the engineering for getting the money name and fame and after getting this what he will get he will be happy and prosperous suppose if you go see the doctor after getting the degree mbbs md what he will get what for he is doing he is doing for expertise doctor he is doing post graduation in medical science for expertise if somebody want to be cardiac surgeon somebody want to be orthopedic surgeon expertise in his field he want name money and fame after getting this what he will get he will be he will be happy and prosperous similarly is officer if you you know is officer is a very tough comp- tough examination students are working very hard after getting is officer he will, what he will get he will get the power money respect and after getting this what he will get happy and prosperous does if you see everything in the life whatever our ambitions are there after fulfilling these ambitions we'll get happiness and prosperity and therefore ultimate aim of doing all these efforts is to get the happiness and prosperity and therefore our basic aspirations and whatever we are doing is doing for the happiness and prosperity prosperity and therefore one should know what is our basic aspiration we don't know basic our basic aspiration aspiration because if we know where to reach where to go then we will behave accordingly we will acquire the things accordingly suppose you want to go to delhi if you go to the nagpur railway station and if you catch the train of mumbai and you travel towards the mumbai as you go away from the nagpur towards mumbai then you are going more and more away from the delhi isn't it what we are going to see we are only seeing that whether i am getting ac compartment or not i am comfortable or not but where i am going i am not knowing once you know your basic aspiration then you should know where i have to go in the life everybody should know the basic aspiration is it making any sense yes sir exactly exactly right now how the happiness is based on happiness is based on the three factor right understanding and right feeling second is relationship third is the physical facilities 
what do you mean by right understanding means understanding the things as it is that is called the right understanding relationship we should have a fulfilling relationship with human beings which will give the mutual prosperity and happiness why the importance of relationship suppose you are on an uninhabited island nirjan beta var jar tumhala thevla gela aapko rakha gaya yaha sab kuch facilities diya paisa diya acha makan diya khane ke liye entertainment tv video jo chahiye diya ghumne ke liye helicopter diya everything is provided to but you are alone on that island will you be happy no sir no no because what does it mean it means we need the relationship we need the people to become happy please unmute the, your uh, mute your uh, mic if someone is unmuted it now third is the physical facilities what do you mean by physical facilities house cloth car money etc what is the purpose of this physical facility the purpose of physical facility is to nurture our body to protect our body and for right utilization of body is there any other purpose of this physical facility no to nurture our body to protect our body and right utilization of body now if you see the animal then physical facilities are necessary and complete for animals but it is not complete for the human beings for example if you take the example of cow if cow is hungry then it needs the food that is grass and all these things cow will eat the grass and once she once she is full of stomach is full then what she will do kya karti hai gaiya bas चबाना चालू करती थी बैठ जाती है एक जगह और चबाने चर्विंग से स्टार्ट बाद में ये सोचती है कि आंखें बंद कर दी थी और चबाना चालू कर देती है चीविंग इज स्टार्टेड बाद में ये सोचती है कि भाई मेरा बछड़ा है अभी उसका एम करना है कैसा होगा अगले साल कैसा होगा कल का कैसा होगा नहीं सोचती है आदमी का ऐसा होता है क्या आदमी को सिर्फ खाना दे दिया कपड़े दे दिए वो माइंड फ्री रहता है उसका नहीं होता है वो तो उसको तो रिलेशनशिप भी लगती है फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज भी लगती है राइट right अंडरस्टैंडिंग भी लगता है राइट right फीलिंग्स भी लगता है बट आजकल क्या हो रहा है अपना फोकस फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज पे ज्यादा बढ़ गया वी नीड द राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग रिलेशनशिप इन फिजिकल फैसिलिटी वी हैव निग्लेक्टेड द राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग अपने को मालूम ही नहीं है राइट right अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्या अच्छा है क्या बुरा है यह मालूम ही नहीं है रिलेशनशिप तो आज दिनों दिन कभी हो जा रहा है एवरीबडी इज इन लिविंग इन न्यूक्लियर फैमिली नो बडी वॉन्ट टू कीप द कॉन्टेक्ट विथ अदर्स एवरीबडी इज फोकसिंग ऑन द फिजिकल फैसिलिटी एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दिस ओनली फिजिकल फैसिलिटी लीड्स टू द फीलिंग ऑफ डिप्रिवेशन एंड वेन देर इज अ फीलिंग ऑफ डिप्रिवेशन देन इट लीड्स टू एक्सप्लॉयटेशन एंड इनजस्टिस आदमी दूसरे के तरफ से लेना चालू कर देता है कितना भी मिला तो भी ही इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड एंड दैट्स वाई वी लीड टू अनहैपीनेस एम आई इज इट मेकिंग एनी सेंस एम आई राइट आज दिनों दिन राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग बढ़ रहा है रिलेशनशिप बढ़ रही कि कम हो रही है इफ आज अगर आप पिछले 20 साल 15 साल के कंपैरिजन में देखो तो यू विल सी दैट द रिलेशनशिप इज रिड्यूसिंग डे बाई डे आर यू एग्री यस सर एग्री now there is a one book by author susan george the title of the book is the how the other half dies she says if you read this book then around 6 hours is required to read the book if you sit continuously for reading then she says about 400 people would die because of the hunger within 6 hours why this is happening is it because of malnutrition and starvation is it because of overpopulation 
is it because of because of climatic condition or lack of cultivable land she say no none of the reason is applicable to here the reason is that the other half is dying because the first half is not rightly utilizing the resources aaj apan resources barabar use nahi karte kitna waste karte hai food kitna godamon mein food waste hota hai apne ko iske bare mein malum nahi jitna khana hai utna khate hai kya kitna waste karte hai because we see ourselves we don't feel a feeling of relationship with other are you agree to substantiate this i will put an example there is a united nation report published in 11th may 2011 this report says about 4.2 million tons of foods are produced throughout the world and out of 4.2 billion tons billion means 10 raised to power 9 out of 4.2 billion tons 1 billion tons food is lost every year there is another report by united nations food and agriculture organization fao fao this report says that 1.3 billion tons is lost every year in the world our global food production is six times requirement and our wastage global food wastage is one third of production if you save this wastage one third of production then you are enough to feed 1300 crores people per year you can imagine how much people can be feeded if you save the wastage if you stop the wastages what is the population of india about 140 crores am i right as per then since six of two, this to 2023 22 means 10 times the population of india will be feeded if you avoid the wastage are you agree you can understand therefore we are not bother about the wastage we don't feel the relatedness with others we think of others have you understand the right utilization we don't know what is the right utilization is it a question of production no it is not question of production because i said global food production is six times the requirement is it a question of distribution yes it is a question of distribution loss of lot of wastage is there during the distribution of food is it a question of relationship yes it is a question of relationship it is a question of right understanding yes it is a question of right understanding is it a question of education yes we need the education we have to educate the people they should understand to avoid the wastage of food we made the assumption that more money makes more happiness is it true what do, what what is your opinion what do you feel is it correct no sir as you see, it is as not you see, it's not correct some people feels that it's very correct in i am working in government engineering college last year package to one of our student is 21 lakhs from computer engineering but if you ask the student are you satisfied with this 21 lakhs they say no if you ask them if you i will give a package of 40 lakhs but you have working of 24 hours i am gone insulting you after every one hour humiliate you every saturday sunday you have to come in the office then will you come to, will you join this job then they say this no what does it mean it means that only package is not sufficient but at the same time we need the good working condition means money is not only give the happiness it will not impart the happiness but at the same times we need the other things also 
and since with this assumption based on this assumption we comes into the vicious cycle that we assume that the more money is required for a body and therefore we start more accumulation and once you start accumulating you feel the deprivation it's like a container without bottom if you go on adding more and more in the container without bottom then you will find that you will never find that the container will fill up and because of this you go on adding more and more and you will find none in the container and therefore because of this vicious cycle cycle we don't have any time for relationship and don't time for right understanding am i right everybody is after the physical facilities nowadays they don't know how much i required and therefore they are not satisfied they are unhappy it doesn't mean that you should not earn the money or physical facility but you should understand its priority in the happiness in life recently i read one article news rather in the times of india there was one as officer he was arrest, arrested in the charges of corruption and when his property was counted he has 1000 houses throughout the india in delhi in mumbai in jammu kashmir everywhere where is chennai everywhere he goes he purchase some houses you tell me for a single family 1000 houses if you are up to, you are doing the corruption for creating 1000 houses does it make any sense is it not lack of right understanding what do you feel yes sir is it required is it really required no doesn't require and if you are doing the corruptions if you are making the money for that purpose by other means then is, is, there is a no point in doing that it is a lack of right understanding and because of lack of right understanding we leads to unhappiness similarly clothes do you know how many dresses you have clothes shirt and pants as far as the women are concerned you ask them how many sarees they have i asked to one of the my relatives wife she said she has 1000 saree in kapur you tell me even if she she wears one saree every day it requires 3 years to take the round of one saree what is the use of doing this is it making any sense no sir it is a madness it is a madness right and we are doing this madness and because of this we are unhappy we don't count the our dresses now next is the human being is in coexistence of self and body this is important what is self self is a conscious unit and body is a material unit i will give the example this is very important self is a conscious unit body is a material unit now i will take the example if you want to go to nagpur from amravati and you have got a car your car is old suppose 10 year olds it don't have very good cushion some paint is not there coloring is not very high quality music system in the car is not up to mark but the driver of car is a very expert it then will you reach to nagpur from amravati to nagpur safely yes sir on the contrary if you have a honda city car new branded car very advanced features of the cars are there but the driver is a drunkard he is not skilled person will he reach to will he take you to nagpur from amravati no he will, no he is a heavy drunker then he will create accident our self is a driver our body is a our car therefore we should give more attention to our conscious unit 
then it doesn't mean that you should not neglect the body but at the same time whatever the driver is there it is important now we should see the what is the need for need of self and what is the need of body what is the need of self feeling of happiness love care respect gratitude thoughts desire is it it is not quantitative you cannot say give me 1 kg of love 2 kg of respect it is not measurable but it is required continuously love is required continuously care is required continuously what is the needs of body that is physical facilities like car bungalow cloth food water is it measurable yes two cars required four shirts required six pants required isn't it also it is not continuously required car is not continuously required food is not continuously required isn't it but it is measurable that needs of the self are continuous unlimited needs of the bodies are limited and not called non continuous am i right where should give the attention more or continuous or non continuous what do you feel continuous continuous then how much time you are giving for your self and how much time you are giving to your body body has a non continuous needs limited needs and self has a continuous unlimited needs how many times you are giving what is going in my self what is going in my imagination how what thoughts are going in me what are my expectation what are my feelings and how many time you are saying what close i have yours how many sweets i have eaten are you giving more times to your self or more time to your body we are giving less attention to our self now looking to these things the aict and ugc has made mandatory subject this universal human values and the universal human values contains is available in the website www.uhv.org.in and there are uh, morning sessions regular fdp on the uhv and students uh, also some programs are also there for students regularly now if you enroll and if you join this then you will come to know what are the values now let us see what are the universal human values the characteristics of universal human values is that it does not changes with time and space it is universal it is natural it is rational rational means not based on the blind beliefs it leads to harmony there are nine universal human values first is the trust that is called vishwas second is the respect that is called adar affection sneha care for it is called mamta guidance vasalya reverence shraddha glory that is gaurav gratitude krutajnata and last is love that is prem these are the nine values just you memorize this just take a pause and read it so that you will understand it now these are the nine values we should imbibe in ourselves what do you mean by trust trust means to be assured that human beings want to make me happy as well as the others happy mujhko sukhi karna chahta hai dusron ko bhi sukhi karna chahta iska assured hona ise trust bolte hain respect respect means right evolution what do you mean by right evolution for example i am working as a professor in government engineering college if you if somebody says sir your financial position is good you can lead the life 
to meet your requirement i mean this is my right evaluation but if somebody says you are the richest person in amravati this is over evaluation is it a right evaluation if somebody says you are the poorest person in the amravati this is under evaluation is it a right evaluation no when you do the right evaluation of other person or ourselves then we feel respected is it making any sense is it correct yes next sir is, yes next is affection feeling of being related with other ye mera relative hai har ek aadmi mera relative hai mera kareeb ka aadmi hai ये फीलिंग आना इसे अफेक्शन बोलते हैं अभी ट्रस्ट के लिए कुछ पैसा लगता है क्या नहीं लगता है उसको ये मेरा अच्छा कर रहा है मेरे अच्छे के लिए काम कर रहा है ये ट्रस्ट करने के लिए कोई पैसा नहीं लगता रिस्पेक्ट देने के लिए पैसा नहीं लगता अफेक्शन रिलेटेडनेस के लिए पैसा नहीं लगता नेक्स्ट इज केयर केयर मीन्स फीलिंग ऑफ नर्चर एंड प्रोटेक्ट द बॉडी ऑफ अदर इसके लिए पैसा लगता है नर्चर करने के लिए उसको खाना पीना पिलाना करना पड़ेगा बॉडी के लिए और दूसरे को भी देना पड़ेगा उसको प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए बॉडी को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए कपड़े लगेंगे इसके लिए भी पैसा लगेगा केयर के लिए पैसा लगता है ट्रस्ट के लिए नहीं लगता है रिस्पेक्ट के लिए नहीं लगता है अफेक्शन के लिए नहीं लगता है गाइडेंस गाइडेंस मीन्स फीलिंग ए राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड फीलिंग इन अदर्स एज ए माई रिलेटिव राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इम्बाइप करने के लिए पैसा नहीं लगता है रिवरेंस फीलिंग ऑफ एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ एक्सेलेंस इन अदर जिसमें एक्सेलेंस है उत्कृष्टता है वो एक्सेप्ट करने की फीलिंग यानी रिवरेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर मैं प्रोफेसर हूं मेरे सपोज हंड्रेड पेपर्स पब्लिश हो गए हैं मैंने किताब लिखी है अवार्ड्स मिले हैं एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूं मैं पेटेंट है मेरे बहुत सारे तो आई शुड फील द रिस्पेक्टेड अबाउट मी और एनी पर्सन बिकॉज ही हैज अचीव दैट हाइट दैट इज कॉल्ड द रिवरेंस आज अपन एक्सेप्ट करते हैं क्या एक्सेप्ट नहीं करते हम रिवरेंस नहीं देते हैं दूसरे को वो कैसा नीचा है कैसा उसने पी एच डी किया तो कैसा पी एच डी गलत तरीके से किया वो देखते हैं अपन that leads to unhappiness glory glory means feeling for someone who has made efforts for other excellence dusre ke utkrushtata ke liye jinhone kaam kiya wo feeling aana that is called the glory for example mahatma gandhi unhone desh ke liye kaam kiya lal bahadur shastri ye logon ne dusre ke liye kaam kiya ek se dusre desh ke इंडिपेंडेंस के लिए काम किया देन इट इज कॉल्ड द ग्लोरी ग्रेटिट्यूड फीलिंग ऑफ एक्सेप्टेंस फॉर दो मेड द एफर्ट फॉर माई एक्सेलेंस मेरी उत्कृष्टता के लिए जिन्होंने काम किया उसके लिए जो स्वीकार्य भावना रहती है उसको उसको ग्रेटिट्यूड कहा जाता है कृतज्ञता इसके लिए पैसा लगता है क्या नहीं लगता है लव लव इज द लास्ट वैल्यू दैट इज फीलिंग ऑफ बींग रिलेटेड टू ऑल इज कॉल्ड द लव so i have told you that if you imbibe these feelings then you feel happy and if you exchange this feeling with others then you will feel happy there will be mutual happiness ubhay sukh jisko bolte hai wo milta hai agar ubhay sukh rehta hai to harmony milti hai if you are in harmony you will be in happiness to ye sab karne ke liye sirf as i told you ye care jo hai jo chautha number ka values hai uske liye hi paisa lagta hai बाकी के लिए पैसा नहीं लगता है वी डी नीड द मनी एंड फिजिकल फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज टू केयर द अदर्स एंड देर फोर द एज पर एज द प्रोग्राम इज कंसर्ड फॉर हैप्पीनेस ओनली वेरी लिमिटेड वैल्यूज रिक्वायर्ड ओनली वन वैल्यूज रिक्वायर्ड द मनी एंड फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज नाउ वी हैव टू satisfy the need of body and self both otherwise you will not feel happy for example 
आपको मैंने घर में खाना खाने के लिए बुलाया और आपको पूछा कि भाई आपको क्या अच्छा लगता है तो आपने बोला कि सर हमें रसगुल्ले अच्छे लगते हैं मैं रघुवीर में गया रसगुल्ला लाया और आपको घर में रसगुल्ले खिलाए आपको पहला रसगुल्ला दिया दूसरा दिया और दिया और आपको बीच में गाली दे दी विल यू फील हैप्पी आपके इंसल्टिंग बिहेवियर किया आपसे विल यू फील हैप्पी नो यू विल नॉट फील वाई नॉट यू आर नॉट फीलिंग बिकॉज आई हैव सेटिस्फाइड द नीड ऑफ यूर बॉडी बट आई हैव नॉट सेटिस्फाइड द नीड ऑफ यूर सेल दूसरा एग्जाम्पल लेते अगर आपको घर में बुलाया और अच्छी बात किया आपसे आपको बहुत प्रेज किया मैनर से बात किया बिठाया और कुछ भी खाने को नहीं दिया खाना खाने के लिए बुलाया सिर्फ बातें किया और कुछ भी खाने को नहीं दिया तो विल यू फील हैप्पी आपको इंसल्टिंग लगे भाई ये तो बातें तो बहुत अच्छा कर रहा है लेकिन कुछ भी खाने के लिए बुलाया और ऐसे वापस भेज दिया मीन्स यू आर सेटिस्फाइंग द नीड ऑफ सेल्फ बट नॉट द नीड ऑफ बॉडी बॉडी इज एंट इट देर फोर आपको अगर हैप्पीनेस चाहिए तो बोथ नीड्स सेल्फ एज वेल एज बॉडी की दोनों की भी सेटिस्फाई करना पड़ेगा आज ऐसा कर रहे क्या अपन आज नहीं कर रहे अपन बॉडी की तरफ फोकस दे रहे हैं उसके नीड सेटिस्फाई कर रहे सेल्फ से नीड सेटिस्फाइड नहीं कर रहे इसके कारण अनहैप्पीनेस बढ़ते जा रहा है दूसरा फैक्टर मैंने बताया कि रिलेशनशिप वी शुड मेंटेन द रिलेशनशिप हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर गिविंग अटेंशन फॉर रिलेशन गिविंग ए फोकस ऑन रिलेशनशिप आज ऐसी परिस्थिति कुछ कुछ लोग मूड के हिसाब से गुड मॉर्निंग करते हैं आप उनको गुड मॉर्निंग बोलो उनका मूड अच्छा रहे तो गुड मॉर्निंग बोलेंगे मूड नहीं अच्छा रहेगा तो आपके तरफ देखेंगे कुछ भी नहीं बात करेंगे वी डोंट बॉदर अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप आर यू एग्री विथ मी यस सर एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स आर बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स इन रिलेशनशिप नॉट ड्यू टू द फिजिकल फैसिलिटी आज पैसा सभी के तरफ है जितना चाहिए उतना बहुत अमीर नहीं तो भी खा पी के अच्छे लोग हैं लेकिन रिलेशनशिप में and because of this lack of relationship the family problems and other problems are increasing day by day is it making any sense lagta hai not at all now there is a article in times of india love is number one killer to so, national crime record bureau unhone 2001 थाउजेंड वन टू टू थाउजेंड सेवनटीन का डेटा कलेक्ट किया मर्डर केसेस का बिकॉज ऑफ लव लव कल्बिनेटेड टू मर्डर एंड इट वॉज फाउंड दैट द हाइएस्ट मर्डर केसेस बिकॉज ऑफ द लव इज इन फोर्थ स्टेट इन आंध्र प्रदेश थ्री एटी फोर महाराष्ट्र टू सेवेंटी सेवन यूपी में थ्री नाइनटी फाइव तमिलनाडु थ्री नाइनटी टू what does it indicate why this love is number one killer because we don't understand the meaning of love what is happening today if you see the present scenario the acid throwing on the faces of girls sexual harassment love affair cases culminating to murder divorce cases exploitation of women are increasing or decreasing day by day is it increasing or decreasing increasing increasing you will surprise to know that present study indicate that at the global level in educated person divorce rate is around 51% is it not shocking 50% marriages divorce ke taraf ja rahe world world data dekhe dekha jayega to global level pe what does it indicate why this is happening because, because we don't understand yeah yes. yes i i think it is because if one person loves the other person he expects the other person should also love him in return and if mm-hmm. this condition is not satisfied then uh, he becomes violent sometimes wow. i guess yes right you are right perfectly right 
this is the reason and why this is happening because we don't have values in us aap bataiye mujhe aapke isme aapke partner ke sath trust hai aapke partner ke bare mein respect hai affection hai unke bare mein ek dusre ke bare mein care hai guidance hai aap dete ek dusre ko reverence bhi hai glory hai gratitude hai krutagnyata hai unke bare mein ek dusre ke bare mein baad mein pyar hai aapka love hai to kaisa rahega ye pyar usme honge divorce cases do you think aaj hai kya respect family mein respect nahi husband aur wife mein trust nahi hai respect to aadhari hai disrespect kaisa bahut sare cases mein disrespect bhi dikhai padta hai to jab ye values apne mein hote ek dusre mein apan express karte to ye jo improper behavior hai ये बहुत हद तक कम कम हो जाता है आदमी का बिहेवियर डेफिनेट होता है और डू यू थिंक दैट इफ यू हैव गॉट दिस वैल्यूज देन देयर विल बी मर्डर केसेस बिकॉज ऑफ द लव नो नो बिकॉज यू हैव नो नेवर बिकॉज यू हैव गॉट द ऑल रिक्वायर्ड फीलिंग्स recently there was a news in bihar 600 times more prisoners in the jail than its capacity still they are inadequate abhi you you tell me whether the laws are become strict day by day or getting uh normal or getting thoda kam yani law ki intensity of jo bolte hai uska strictness kam ho raha hai बढ़ रहा है स्ट्रिक्टनेस बढ़ रहा है लॉस का दिनों दिन तो भी प्रिजनर्स कम प्रिजनर भी बढ़ रहे दिनों दिन गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग लॉट ऑफ फंड्स टू कंस्ट्रक्ट न्यू प्रिजेंस डिस्पाइट ऑफ दिस द प्रिजनर्स आर इंक्रीज बिकॉज दे आर लैक ऑफ वैल्यूज दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज गुड एंड वॉट इज बैड एम आर राइट यस सर we assume there is another assumption that we assume that the human being is only body on body sharir we don't see the consciousness in itself and therefore we are only concentrated to fulfill the requirement of body not fulfill of requirement of self we don't see how i will be happy how will be prosperous i told you for happy life there are three parameters first is the right understanding and right feelings second is the relationship third is the physical facility what should be the sequence for these three parameters 1 2 3 3 2 1 or 2 3 1 what do you feel kya hona chahiye first priority pe right understanding right feeling hona chahiye relationship physical facility or physical facility first relationship second right understanding and right feeling third anybody from from the participant so 1 2 3 is right 1 2 3 1 2 3 aaj kaisa ho raha hai aaj aaj ka trend kya hai today's trend 3 to 1 3 to 1 aaj pura focus physical facilities pe iske karan unhappiness pad raha hai we should know the responses of self and body बॉडी के रिस्पॉन्सेस क्या है रिकॉग्नाइजिंग एंड फुलफिलिंग सेल्फ के रिस्पॉन्सेस क्या है रिकॉग्नाइजिंग एज्यूमिंग नोइंग एंड फुलफिलिंग आई विल एक्सप्लेन बाय एग्जांपल अगर आपको अच्छा नहीं लग रहा आपकी तबीयत अच्छी नहीं है आप क्या करेंगे डॉक्टर के पास जाएंगे डॉक्टर आपको चेक करेंगे और बोलेंगे कि आपको इंजेक्शन लेना पड़ता है तो आपकी बॉडी क्या करेंगी जब इंजेक्शन नीडल्स पियर्स करेंगे बॉडी में तो बॉडी देखेंगे कि वेदर इट्स ए शार्प नीडल और ब्लंट नीडल दैट इज कॉल्ड द रिकोगनाइजिंग अगर शार्प है तो बॉडी विल अलाउ द नीडल टू इमर्स इन साइड अगर ब्लंट है तो नहीं करेंगे मीन्स रिकोगनाइजिंग एंड फुलफिलिंग शार्प है तो रिकोगनाइज करेंगे और फुलफिल करेंगे ब्लंट है तो नहीं करेंगे रिकोगनाइज करेंगे फुलफिल नहीं करेंगे नहीं दिस इज द ओनली बॉडी डू लेकिन सेल्फ क्या करता है सेल्फ एज्यूम करता है what is the assumption suppose the assumption of self is the doctor is good it is going to improve my health 
then what you will do you will give your hand you will be ready to take the injections immediately aapko kisne bol diya aapka assumption badal gaya ye doctor barabar nahi hai iska past record bahut kharab hai abhi do patients inke aaya expire ho gaye to aap kisne bol diya apna aapka assumption ho gaya to aap lenge injection wo doctor ka will you take the injection nahi lenge agar aapka assumption barabar hai doctor is really bad and you come to know that he is bad that is correct assumption then you will save your life agar assumption galat hai doctor acha hai aur assumption aapne galat kar diya to knowing will be wrong therefore your assumption should be knowing right understanding correct hona chahiye aur jab hum assumption pe hamara behavior rehta hai jo galat bhi ho sakta hai ya सच भी हो सकता है तो उसके कारण अपना बिहेवियर अलग अलग होता है राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग के साथ नहीं चलते हैं अवर अजम शुड शुड भी राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड बेस्ड ऑन द नोइंग तो जो हमारा इमेजिनेशन चलता है दिमाग में हमारे सेल्फ में या हम डिसीजन जो लाइफ में लेते हैं तो तीन फैक्टर पे लेते हैं फर्स्ट इज राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सेकेंड इज द प्री कंडीशन थर्ड इज द सेंसेशन राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग मीन्स राइट अंडर वट इज द राइट इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द नेचुरल एक्सेप्टेंस प्री कंडीशन मीन्स बेस्ड वॉट एवर द बिलीफ्स वी हैव फ्रॉम द चाइल्ड हुड फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपको बचपन से ये आपके दिमाग में आ गया कि लॉट ऑफ मनी गिवज द लॉट ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट ये आपको दिमाग में प्री कंडीशन हो गई है तो इज इट ट्रू अभी सोसाइटी में वो विजय मल्ल्या है नीरव मोदी है दे आर लॉट ऑफ मनी आर दे रिस्पेक्टेड नो बन ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी महात्मा गांधी संत तुकार महाराज दे वे आर हैविंग मनी लॉट ऑफ मनी स्विस बैंक में कोई अकाउंट था उनका कुछ भी नहीं स्टिल दे आर रिस्पेक्टेड मीन्स दीज आर द प्री कंडीशन आर ऑल नॉट करेक्ट Our decision should not be based on the precondition. Next factor is sensation. हमारे फाइव सेंस ऑर्गन होते हैं आई नोज ईयर स्किन टंग और अगर ये सेंस ऑर्गन के ऊपर हम डिसीजन्स लेते हैं हमारा इमेजिनेशन करते हैं तो भी गलत होता है एग्जाम्पल एक एग्जाम्पल ले दो आई विल टेक एन एग्जाम्पल सपोज आई हैव कार मेरे पास कार है जो दस साल पुरानी है और मेरे फ्रेंड ने बोल दिया कि सर आपकी कार दस साल हो गई आप नई कार ले लो नाई विल सी वेदर माई डिसीजन बेस्ड ऑन द राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्री कंडीशन और सेंसेशन राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग से अगर मैं डिसीजन लेता हूँ तो आई विल सी द पर्पज ऑफ कार वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ कार टू रीच द डेस्टिनेशन इजीली एंड प्रोटेक्टेड फ्रॉम द सन रेन हेवी विंड्स पोल्यूशन एक्सेट्रा इज इट फुलफिलिंग आई विल सी दैट मेरी कार तो दस साल है लेकिन अच्छी चल रही है एवरेज दे रही है ये सब मेरा प्रोटेक्शन हो रहा है मैं इसका यूज भी नहीं है कॉलेज में जाता हूँ पाँच किलोमीटर लेके आता हूँ कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं मैं नहीं लूँगा गाड़ी क्योंकि इट इज़ फुलफिलिंग माई रिक्वायरमेंट अगर प्री कंडीशन है दूसरा फैक्टर कॉस्टली एंड हाई एंड कार मीन्स स्टेटस एंड रिस्पेक्ट इन सोसाइटी तो मैं क्या करूँगा ये प्री कंडीशन के साथ मेरी 10 साल पुरानी गाड़ी बेच दूंगा और नई हाई एंड कार लेके आऊंगा क्योंकि मुझे रिस्पेक्ट मिलाना है कार से थर्ड फैक्टर सेंसेशन अगर मेरे को रेड कलर कार अच्छी लगती है हाई पावर एसी है उसमें हाई एंड मॉडल है उसमें बहुत सारे हाई एंड फीचर्स हैं जो मैं यूज भी नहीं करता हूँ अगर मैं सेंसेशन के हिसाब से लेता हूँ तो मैं कार लूंगा So what should be the my criteria for purchasing new car? Is it right understanding, precondition, or sensation? What do you think? Anybody from the participant? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, according to me, right understanding will be uh, good. Like, but it depends upon different people. yes it depends but what should be the our imagination because we our many decisions in the life 
takes on the precondition and sensation and because of this it leads to lot of problems agar aapki precondition barabar nahi agar ek car se main respect milana chahta hu to kitni bhi costly car lenge will it create it uh, will will it create the feeling of uh, respect or feeling of jealousy sometimes aapko kya lagta hai sometimes jealousy also many times create the feeling jealousy kisi yes. ko lagta nahi hai many times sometimes is there but aap car se sachmuch respect mila sakte hai kya aapka behavior acha nahi hai aur aap acha will will you get the respect from the high end car no sir no sir. that's why agar jitna bhi kitni bhi aapko ek car liya honda city liya aapne aap society mein leke gaye kuch log aise rahenge ki respect nahi denge aapko तो तो बोलेंगे भाई इसने तो कुछ तो भी गड़बड़ कर दिया और इसके बाद आपको क्या लगेगा ये होंडा सिटी से नहीं मिलता इससे बड़ी अच्छी कार लेंगे और ये कंपटीशन बढ़ती जाती है हर बार आप इससे फुलफिल कर रिस्पेक्ट मिलाना चाहता है जो मिलता नहीं है जो चीजों से जो मिलता नहीं है वो करते जाते हैं तो अनहेपीनेस बढ़ता है अरे एम आई राइट क्या लगता है आपको yes, therefore our imagination our decisions our feelings our expectation should be based on the right understanding aajkal jo aapne dekha hai wo jo jeans pehante hai bacche log wo sab chhed chhed wale tears jeans pehante hai torn jeans bahut sare chhed rehte hai usko aur wo pehen ke wo what they think that wearing such type of jeans we will get respected do you feel the respected by looking to this such fellow uh, such students or such uh, human beings kitne logo ko lagta hai jaisa ye phate hue kapde pehen ke apne ko respect milta hai aur log dete hai respect i was traveling to pune few days back one of the iit student was there in ac ac compartment he was wearing so jeans most of the part of his body was just appearing <laughs> instead of disappearing i ask him what is the what is the purpose of the jean is it to protect your legs or to expose your legs he said sir ye fashion hai aapko nahi samajh samjhega <coughs> now our as i told you we have human beings in coexistence of self and body सेल्फ में क्या चलता है इमेजिनेशन चलता है इमेजिनेशन में क्या चलता है अपने डिजायर थॉट एक्सपेक्टेशन और ये बेस्ड ऑन योर थॉट्स योर डिजायर एंड एक्सपेक्टेशन यू गिव द कमांड्स टू द बॉडी एंड बॉडी से सेल्फ की तरफ सेंसेशन जाता है अगर ये इमेजिनेशन इन टूडे सीनियर इफ यू सी द रेड कलर दैट इज प्री कंडीशन मोस्ट ऑफ अवर इमेजिनेशन बेस्ड ऑन द प्री कंडीशन ब्लैक कलर शोज द सेंसेशन एंड येलो कलर बेस्ड ऑन द नेचुरल एक्सपीरियंस राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेन यूर कंप्लीट सर्कल इज राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू विल हैव अ राइट डिसीजन एंड यू विल फील हैप्पी कंटिन्यूसली दैट इज अवर बेसिक एस्पिरेशन आर यू एग्री डू यू फील करेक्ट यस सर सर टू कंटिन्यूस हैप्पी एंड प्रोस्परस लाइफ वी शुड है हारमोनी विथ four factors as i told you self family society and nature self se kaise harmony rakhenge your feeling thought expectation should be in line with natural acceptance it should be based on the right understanding and right feeling if you observe your imagination every moment and make it correct your thoughts are correct your feelings are correct your expectations are correct then you will maintain your harmony with self are you aware of your imagination what is going on in your imagination very few how many times how many percentage of 24 hours or 12 hours you are aware of your imagination very few times and therefore we should do not maintain the harmony if you are aware you will maintain the harmony as far as the family members you should have good relation with family member society you should have good relation with all the people in the society you should protect the nature preserve the nature 
tree plantation avoid use of plastic bags rain water harvesting you should protect the nature i i keep the cloth bags in my car every time and whenever i go to the vendors i don't use i don't take the plastic bags many times i i, I offer him my black cloth bags and ask him to give me on the cloth bag if everybody is try to do like this then it will preserve and protect the nature can we do like this a small things we can do and we can protect the nature we have feeling of competition or collaboration in our day to day life if you have feeling of competition then it leads to adverse effect it will have adverse effect on the happiness and prosperity for other human being also society and when there is a adverse feeling then there is a contradiction and when there is a contradiction conflicts then it will leads to disharmony and when there is a disharmony there will be unhappiness then we should have collaboration cooperation when we feel a relatedness to each other then we will have cooperation we can do the things instead of competition we can have a collaboration and it is a naturally accepted feeling if you know the military budget throughout the world the us has recently declared its military budget it is 740 billion dollars and you can see how much it is next is china 340 about 340 billion dollars you see that how how much money we are keeping for military purpose because us want to be overpowered and when we are feeling of competition we start accumulating we will depriving the others we will have a feeling of injustice with others in every situation we should have response or reaction we should know we should what do you feel we should have a response or reaction in the situation in every situation we should have response or reaction what is what leads to response response means feeling of your own right reactions means feeling based on others behavior agar agla aadmi acha behave karta hai to hum acha bartav karenge agar agla aadmi acha bartav nahi karta hai to hamara bartav bigadega hamara remote control kiske paas rahega agle aadmi ke paas agar hum reaction mein rehte aapka conduct indefinite rahega अगर रिस्पॉन्स में रहते हैं तो हमारा रिमोट कंट्रोल हमारे हाथ में रहेगा हम सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइज रहेंगे हमारा बिहेवियर हमारे कंट्रोल में रहेगा और कंडक्ट इज रिफ्यू देर फोर वी शुड रिस्पॉन्स टू द सिचुएशन एंड रिएक्शन द सिचुएशन इज इट मेकिंग एनी सेंस इज इट करेक्ट यस यस सर एग्जैक्टली राइट नाउ फाइव टिप्स फॉर हैप्पी एंड सक्सेसफुल लाइफ रेगुलेशन ऑफ मॉर्निंग आवर्स एंड मॉर्निंग हैबिट्स अपने स्पंज देखा है स्पंज अगर पानी में स्पंज डालते हैं तो स्पंज क्या करते हैं पूरा एब्सॉर्व कर लेता है पानी इस तरह इसी तरह अगर मॉर्निंग में आप टाइम मैनेजमेंट करते टाइम मॉर्निंग में जब आप सो के उठते हैं तो फ्रेश रहते वो टाइम उसका टाइम अच्छे चीज के लिए वो यूटिलाइज करते हैं जैसा स्पिरिचुअल एक्टिविटीज है एक्सरसाइज है अच्छी बातें अपन दिमाग में डालते हैं मॉर्निंग अवर्स में तो यू विल फील हैप्पी यू विल फील हैप्पी थ्रू आउट द डे आज क्या हो रहा है मॉर्निंग में उठे बराबर पहले मोबाइल देखते हैं हम उसमें बहुत सारे निगेटिव थिंग्स रहते हैं पूरे दिमाग में डालते थे इसलिए प्रॉब्लम्स अनहैप्पीनेस बढ़ते जा रहा है सेकेंड इज द एन एटीट्यूड ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड वॉट एवर वी हैव वी शुड थैंकफुल टू द गॉड फॉर वॉट एवर वी गॉट इट देन वी फील हैप्पी Life of seva bhav, do something for others without expecting anything. Doctor Abdul Kalam, who was president of India, he asked him in the president's house. He asked a reporter, "How do you stay fresh? How do you stay happy?" So he told me that whatever comes to me, what do I see? What do I need? What do I need? उसके जरूरत के हिसाब से मैं क्या हेल्प कर सकता हूँ अगले आदमी को 
वैसा मैं हेल्प करता हूँ जब मैं हेल्प करता हूँ उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट फुलफिल हो जाती है तो वो हैप्पी होता है उसके हैप्पीनेस देख के मैं हैप्पी होता हूँ और मेरा हैप्पीनेस बढ़ने के कारण मेरी इफिशियंसी बढ़ती है देर फोर वी शुड हैव ए लाइफ ऑफ सेवा मेडिटेशन वी शुड डू टेन मिनट्स फिफ्टीन मिनट वेन यूर पॉसिबल एंड वी शुड एसोसिएटेड विद द गुड पीपल्स वी शुड हैव पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग यू माइट बी नोइंग दिन में तीस से चालीस हजार थॉट्स इन नॉर्मल कंडीशन में दिमाग में चलते रहते हैं अगर आप डिस्टर्ब है तो ये बढ़ जाता है इट गोज टू अप टू सिक्सटी थाउजेंड पर डे तो अगर ये थॉट्स पॉजिटिव होते हैं तो अपने इमोशंस पॉजिटिव होते हैं एक्शंस पॉजिटिव होते हैं देर फोर वी शुड हैव ए पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग वी शुड फॉलो द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ पॉजिटिव थिंकिंग रिपीटेड पॉजिटिव अफर्मेशन रिपीटेड पॉजिटिव फीलिंग रिपीटेड पॉजिटिव इमेजिनेशन isn't it that will leads to happiness now these are the something related to the human values and happiness how do you can imbibe the happiness ek poem is suresh patan ji te aiko to aayushya chhan hai thoda lahan hai aayushya chhan hai thoda lahan hai radtos ka vedya ladnyat chhan hai katancha hi phandi madhe phulanchi jhulti kaman hai उचलून घे दुनिया दुकान है जो जीवन जगण निरर्थक मन तो बैमान है सुखा सा कभी हसाव लगता कभी रड़ाव लगता कारण पाना ही सुंदर धबधबा बनने सा पड़ाव लगता उचाव पड़ाव लगता देर इज ए नो शॉर्टकट टू सक्सेस एंड नो देर इज ए नो शॉर्टकट टू सक्सेस यू हेव टू डू द थिंग्स प्रॉपरली and uh, you have to face the situation you have to be happy you should know what is your my basic aspiration and you should stick up to your basic aspiration and you should imbibe the human values in your life and express the human values with others this is in short what i intend to discuss with you if you have any question we will have a session on question and before that i am thankful to dr atik sir director mmttc sgb amravati also aniket thakur who has sir who has also extended the help all you faculty who have actively participated in this program we have two videos right here at right now i don't know whether time permit or not before that if you have any question then we will take the question sir can i ask a question yeah yeah Hello. participants the forum is open for discussion you can yes, directly sir. ask or interact to professor tatewar sir please yes sir i am assistant professor sanjay udge from walchan institute of technology autonomous college solapur maharashtra sir yes sir uh, okay thank you sir uh, if someone is uh, accumulating physical facilities uh, can we say that he is uh, he is uh, moving towards the prosperity and he is in continuous harmony please see the prosperity means feeling of having more than required that is called the prosperity whatever your requirement you should count it how much i required if you are accumulating the things and you fear creating injustice with other then it is not a prosperity but if you are doing the collecting the money for fulfilling your needs and for the betterment of society then you are in prosperity this is what i think uh, okay sir thank you thank you yes anyone else Yes, anybody from the participants? Yes, participants. Anyone else have any queries or the questions? Sir, I think we should go. Yeah, Tanej, Tuneja, ma'am, please. Yes. Uh, just uh, uh, about. Uh, I just want to share my view. 
like what sir has given example of abdul kalam sir so just one song came to my mind if you remember the song i will uh, only uh, mention the lyrics here kisi ki muskurahaton pe ho nisar kisi ka dard mil sake to le udhar kisi ke waaste ho tere dil mein pyar jeena usi ka naam hai i guess wo jo abdul kalam yes, sir yes. ka jo example diya tha to shayad wo in words pe sahi baithta hai yes right you are right ha thank thank you so much sir it was a very interesting session and a uh, food for thought like aapne jitna bhi samjhaya hai wo bahut sahi samjhaya hai aur it is very uh, fruitful session today thank, thank you, you so much sir thank you thank you yes and thanks to atik sir and all the organizing committee of mmttc aniket thakur sir and all the organizing committee for uh, of uh, for this uh, uh, training session it was very well very informative and everything was very well planned and put into and the speakers also very nice thank you thank you so thank much you. Uh, yeah. is there any suggestions for improving our programs uh, that is very appreciable so i request all the or any remarks for improving this program uh, we will definitely appreciate please if anyone have we required your valuable feedback uh, for improving this program because your feedback uh, is not terms of our criticism we will definitely uh, reach out with your feedback and uh, your feedback will be def- uh, your feedback will be reported to ugc directly ministry of education so this program will be enhanced accordingly if you have any correct suggestions then please uh, sir one second sir hello can i speak sir uh, yes yes you can sir uh, i think uh, this uh, uh, all about today's talk uh, it was related to universal human values sir right yes sir. right right so uh, uh, can i request to organizing committee and you sir to provide some yes. ppt related to universal human values this uh, i would like to bring to your notice that uh, www.uhv.org.in if okay. you refer okay. this website all the ppts so many okay. ppts and so many literature is available on the website you can easily assess and get downloaded okay okay sir thank you thank you once again thank you okay, sir uh, sir can we go for or is pardon your voice is not clear sir now it is clear sir can we go with uh, the video ahead or the conclude with this session sir ha huh, video video yes, how much time is there it will take sir around 15 minutes further 15 sir, there minutes will, will be, it per- uh, sir there will be a 5 minutes we have 5 minutes sir no then it will not there are two videos 15 minutes each i will yes, i think you can not- you can share with me i will share in our whatsapp group sir okay okay we will do like that okay Okay, that is also available on the website. Yeah, yeah, sir. Definitely, yeah. I will. Uh, whatever maybe the literature you have told, that literature is already available with us, and we have already may, uh, uploaded in our portal, sir. This is MMTTC okay. portal, because okay. uh, I think all this uh, uh, material is available with the AICT website also. Yeah, yeah, it is available on the web. Uh, any participants can have any feedback about about my presentation. Yes, participants, mm-hmm. please. if you have any uh, suggestions please uh, help me so that i can improve my presentation and also my if any communication gap is there i will take it very positively and welcome also it will help me to improve myself my sound is was clear yes sir yes yes sir pauses is what was it fast clarity of the subject can i put the real example properly yes sir yes karenge fir uske time hello
Yes. I tried to have a dialogue instead of monologue. That's why, so that it should be live session, sort of interactive session. I don't sir, know whether I, I could fulfill the yes. Sir, I think there is no questions or the queries from participant sides. So, if you could permit, uh, shall we conclude, sir? Okay, 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 okay. For parties. Uh, yes, sir. Very nicely arranged, yeah. well planned, and very humble, very polite, and in a very gentle way you have given the deliberations thank you we have been i have enjoyed very much sir thank you thank you uh, place on record sincere thanks to uh, organizing committee especially to dr uh, professor dr muhammad atik sir for giving this opportunity and all sessions were very much uh, very nicely arranged thank you so much sir Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of the uh, Malvi Mission Teacher Training Center, now it's time to conclusion. And uh, on behalf of the UGC Malvi Mission Teacher Training Center, Sant Garge Baba Amravati University, I express, I extend my heartfelt gratitude and sincere thanks to Professor Tatewar sir. Sir, uh, you, really, sir. Uh, today this is the last uh, session uh, of this entire program. And uh, in the last session, you have delivered a uh, uh, when I was started with this session, I have told that ki Marathit mantat na ki balakudu ani balakudu he pajana phar garje chast ani sauskar he society la vachau shakta sauskar he society la apne samajala ghalau shakta. But definitely, sir, uh, this uh, uh, human values, universal human values, that is a very big topic in today's era, and that is very essential in our <clears throat> uh, higher education yeah, society yeah. or higher learning program. So uh, on the topmost authorities like AICT, that's are uh, that's are incorporated in our uh, induction program. Uh, that is start from very beginning of our education uh, life. That is in higher education. So sir, you have explained uh, this topic in very interactive way and a very such a nice way. You have delivered and quoted uh, more must. Uh, uh, you have quoted. Um, nice examples for uh, each and every uh, topic you have uh, delivered here, sir. Thank you so much, sir. On behalf of UGC HR, uh, UGC Malvi Mission Teacher Training Center, I again extend my heartfelt gratitude and sincere thanks to Professor Tatewar, sir. And Thank uh, you, sir. With, this, uh, with the permission of Professor Tatewar, sir, I would like to declare that, uh, friends, this session will be over here. Participants are requested to stay back for only five minutes. Thank you to one and all. Thank you. Shall I leave the session? Yeah, yeah, sir. Please, sir, please. Okay, so participants, now we have ended this program um, with uh, our commitment. So we required you a couple of feedback. If you have any suggestions for our improvement, definitely we will incorporate in our next upcoming program and that will be beneficial for each and everyone. So if a couple of participants have any kind of feedbacks or uh, their oral feedback also, uh, you can share with us. Congratulations, sir. Sir, thank you. Very uh, nicely arranged. Almost all sessions, deliberations, presentations, and contents were uh, very nice, and I have enjoyed a lot. Uh, Thanks for giving an opportunity. Khatib, and sir. No, yes, Mr. sir. Khatib, sir, uh, it's our prime duty to deliver such kind of uh, things or such kind of lectures in regular mode, definitely. But uh, without your cooperation. Uh, it is not possible to conduct in a very sophisticated manner, sir. Yes, so sir. Always must, our cooperation yeah. is there. And first of all, first such of all, type of I'm, sessions, if you have, please convey I'm, us. And yeah, yes, I would sir, like definitely. to join all sessions. And I am very much Thank thankful you so much. to uh, all our stalwart faculty members who have joined with us and enjoy these sessions or... Uh, we are stay connected uh, near about eight days on the different themes and different topics. So without your cooperation participants, this is not possible to conduct such kind of workshops or such kind of training programs. So I am.
thankful on behalf of the UGC Malvi Mission Teacher Training Center, Saint Galge Baba Amravati University, for uh, your smooth uh, for your uh, entire cooperation during this program. And uh, two things are there that is very essential. And uh, first thing is that ki you have to uh, mention your feedback. Uh, through the MMTTC portal because uh, whatever may be the feedback that is directly reported to UGC and uh, upon completion of your feedback your attendance will be I will upload your attendance and thereafter your certificates will be generated okay so first thing is uh, really about uh, you have to complete uh, your feedback process uh, you can just log into your MMTTC portal, whatever may be the registration you have made using that credentials. You can use that credential and just log in and uh, feed your feedback. There are a couple of questions, I think three or five questions and some uh, uh, comments. Uh, if you have any kind of comments regarding the program that may be positive or negative, definitely you can do that and uh, directly submit to the UGC. And uh, thereafter, I will attend uh, your uh, because after completion of your feedback, I will attend. Uh, I will upload your attendance in portal, and then after your certificate will be generated. So entire process, if from your side it is really completed, uh, that will be take three months more days. So well, your certificates will be definitely released by the uh, Monday uh, Monday evening or the uh, Tuesday morning. Okay. But that is depending upon your submission of feedback. So you can submit your feedback as soon as possible. Then we will release the certificates. If uh, you, anyone has any queries or the question in this regard, they can ask, please. Sir, can we uh, start uh, feeding the feedback from tomorrow, today? Sir, yes, yes. That is available from today, sir. You can just, uh, because your training, I have mentioned that the training has been completed with 191 participants. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, the, uh, Professor Sharvari Dikshit, ma'am, there is no quiz now. <laughs> yes, anyone has any queries or the questions? If no, then we will stop here. Sir, can you, sir, can you provide a link to uh, to submit the feedback? Sir, yes, yes. What can I do? I will directly provide the link of uh, MMTTC portal. You have to just log in and uh, using your credential and then after you will get uh, that feedback form that will be available top on the left side that is uh, in the tab uh, one uh, second or third number of tab of feedback you can just uh, use that tab and uh, fill your feedback uh, See, okay I so okay. Put, i have put up the link, uh, in our whatsapp group okay so thank you Is there any queries or suggestions or if a, anyone has any questions regarding anything we will reply or our group is open you can just ask or the queries any kind of queries you can put and participants this group will be remain as it is uh, because uh, it has been created for some purpose um, that is uh, basically for the academic purpose so if you have any kind of upgradation and any kind of workshops or the seminars or symposiums or any kind of training programs you can just post, uh, post uh, on this group so other participants will definitely uh, benefited from that so that is a very interactive session i once again thankful to all of you and on behalf of the malvi mission teacher training center i express my sincere thanks to all of the participants and stay connected and also um, convey to your faculty, colleges, faculty, uh, colleges, other colleges, faculty members to join with our center. So thank you. Thank you so much. And we will stop now here. Thank you so much.